Hey. Hey. Oh, I, I put up his picture immediately. You, now you know there's a secret secret guest here. I was supposed to actually kind of stagger this. Mm. I think that we are... Hey. Oh, got a chat here already. It's from somebody by the name of uh, Mindset Central. Yeah, who's Hello, Mindset? Hey, wait a second. Guy? Hey. You know, I was about to say, uh, I was about to kind of like stagger this and kind of open this, be like, hey, uh, welcome to Fotaku Lounge today. Got a special guest. I was about to say something like, uh, hey, Gareth, what do you think of, and then I was going to like mess up your surname because it's Davies. Davies? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 well, it's, it's weird. It's like in the UK, it's, it's pronounced um, Davis. Davis. Okay. But, but in, in the, in North America, it's pronounced Davies. Okay, well, I happen to be uh, so, uh, half a half of my life a North American, so I'll, I'll say Davies. But go. I was That's as funny. I was kind of bringing up the name in my mind and how mm -hmm. to do this intro. I was going to say Emrys because then, of course, Emrys is a famous Gareth Emrys is a famous trans DJ. At ah. least you're from the same aisle. There you go. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Gareth. man. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love your videos. I discovered it like. I don't know, maybe a year or so, maybe 18 months ago, something like that. I kind of stumbled on your 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 streams and your videos, um, mainly because of Minidisc. And um, I'm a big fan of, of Minidisc. And uh, you've made some great videos, man. Some really, really good quality, awesome, great videos. And and that's what sucked me in. And I, I subbed and and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Well, thank you very much for coming. I, uh, and here I have are. had a total of, I'm trying to think had a total of two guests and uh, both have had uh -huh. some sort of relationship to uh, Manita. So I, I'm very happy to have you. The last time was uh, Stefano Brilli. Of course, he's the, he's the uh -huh. uh, author of WebMD. Mm -hmm. um, have you had a chance to use WebMD? Oh yeah. I've been using it for, for, for forever. It's like, you know, with my, my net MD uh, machines, it's, it's, it's the go-to, right? You know, you're, you don't want to be screwing around with all, you know, trying to get <laughs> old pieces of crap software working. Whereas this web interface is just, it just works beautifully. You know, Drag works great. Love it. Drop. Ab absolutely love it, man. On the um, web. <laughs> yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I um I, I I emailed him a while ago because uh I you know to thank him for what yeah, what, a, what an amazing job he he's done, uh but all, but also to see if he could implement the the mono standard so we could drag and drop right uh, but, right right. But uh, and he he said that he's gotten a lot of um, requests for the, for mono, but he doesn't think that it's actually part of of the net of the NetMD spec. So he he cannot add uh, the mono, which is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Better ask. Do, do your do your viewers know much about Minidisc? Um, I I I probably not. I mean, I I've I've touched on it a little bit. It's it's just you All know right. the the people that, that listen to my podcast and look at my my YouTube. Uh, they're not tuning in for um, <laughs> for ob obsolete audio formats. <laughs> but, uh, he yeah. said it. He said it right there. Well, <laughs> let's let's do a small intro video for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all to all your viewers here, this is a mini disc. It looks like I guess kind of like one of those second generation floppy disks. Right. Inside, of course, is a tiny little, basically just like a CD. It's using the same technology, and in fact, because it's using the same laser technology, what you're getting is a compressed version of what's on a CD. So basically five times the information that was on mm -hmm. the CD is in squeezed out and you get this. Right. In fact, I suppose you could say they're kind of the progenitor in a way to MP3 technology, which I came, yeah. I believe came just a couple of years later after, after mini disc. Um, of course, mm -hmm. MP3 can put on anything mini disc. You got to use one of the bees, bad boys in one of these bad boys. Yeah. And uh, you can take it on the road. The first ones, in fact, here, check it out. Oh, it's heavy. 10 second oh, memory, uh, shock memory on the first unit ever. The first unit ever, of course, as you know, was a the portable original. unit, was not itself like a, a professional unit. It was a portable, although I, you can't put it in your jeans pockets unless you're, well, actually in the 90s. Do you remember those huge, huge you jeans where the to, leg yeah. was like, you Bag could fit your body in the leg? Yeah, right there. So yeah. might have been able to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're great. And uh, I'm not sure. Not sure how far we want to go into the mini disc thing, except to say this: it's just like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna jump just right here, and uh, you mm -hmm. can tell me why it is that you like a mini disc. But I'll just mm -hmm. say this: I have come back and forth to mini disc uh, how many times? I'm guessing three times. I got heavily involved when I went in 2000 to Sweden, 
and uh, everyone had mini disc and uh, liked it. And the same year I went to Japan and it was the first time I'd ever seen it except, mm-hmm. uh, except apart from uh, on t-shirts back in like 93, 94. And uh, I liked the fact that, you know, it didn't skip. You could put it in your pocket at that time. But later on, I discovered the iPod and I abandoned yeah. my mini disc stuff. Yeah. And then I came back because uh, the head, the website that I was running or helping called headphonia.com. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to do an article on Minidisc. So I bought back into Minidisc. And from that moment on, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a it's a poison in the brain that just keeps me there. It is. I I have a very similar story in in the the mid to late nineties, maybe ninety seven through two thousand. I'm yeah. I want to guess. Uh, I was all about mini disc, all about it because it was portable. It was super cool looking. Oh, it yeah. sounded great. And then around two thousand two two thousand three, I got an iPod. And as soon as I got the iPod, that it was game over. We were, I was done with the discs. That was it. Uh, luckily for me, though, I, I did not um, get rid of all my mini discs, all my my stuff. I yeah. like, put them in a box and stored it away. And then years and years later, in fact, probably like maybe uh, three, almost four years ago, I found the box. And I opened it up, and it was like, he's like, he's, I'm like, God, I can't care. Look at all, I still <laughs> got time all, this, all this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I pulled out, you know, I pulled out my 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 players, and yeah. I started playing with the discs again. And then, and then, next thing you know, I'm I'm like a maniac with this nonsense. <laughs> I'm I'm sucked right back into this stupid shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, and it is. I I, I keep think, racking my brains. You know, why do I do this? You know, it's this completely right. obsolete technology. Um, why would I want, why am I so passionate about it? I mean, they, they just look, uh, they, they still look like they're from the future. <laughs> um, they sound great. And something that we could touch on, on this yep. stream maybe is that when you listen to mini discs and you're out and about in the car, going for a walk, whatever, nobody knows what you're listening to, mm-hmm. but you. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, actually, I don't know. I don't know. When I sent okay, we've been emailing back and forth. We used to uh-huh. used to chat a little bit on Twitter. Not an option anymore. But we've been emailing back and forth. And I can't remember in the show notes of or the, the outline. I was like, hey, uh, I don't remember if we touched that thing, but that is a very big thing where no one mm-hmm. your play counts. Apple don't know it. Google don't know it. Yeah. Uh, whoever's <laughs> reading your software in the back end that's uh-huh. hacked everything doesn't know it. Nobody what's on? Knows. Yeah, what's on mini disc is what you put on there. In fact. In fact, the other cool thing, and actually, this is something that, um, in a little way, in a slight port, uh, a small way, sorry, actually indicts me. Is that if you go to a record shop right now and you wanted mm-hmm. to enjoy music without anyone knowing, of course, you could pick up a CD and buy by cash, right. and then it's yours. Immediately, you could play that CD on a CD player, mm-hmm. and it's just that's just off offline, right? Your batteries. Yeah. I'm pretty sure no one's tracking those or anything like that. The mini disc. The only problem is that you need to then either well you're not going to be able to buy a pre-recorded one i don't i don't think anywhere right now but you can you you can pop your cd in pop your md in Mm -hmm. and just have them dub over each other and that's perfectly fine and then of course you have the same sort of uh, privacy i suppose that you would say um a cd player has sure but you do have to put it into your your deck right to copy it over and we have a question by the way so um I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna say your name here. I got it here. I got it right. It's you are Evie Devil. Medieval. Oh, right. Okay, right. Medieval. I see. That's I okay. agree. In the 90s, I wasn't using internet using the internet very much. So that, that's right. That looks like an M. <laughs> Medieval. Is it true they don't skip? All right. So it's a little bit complicated. The first units, like I say, this big bad one here is called MZ1. Came out in 1993. Uh, this bad boy here has 10 seconds of shock memory, and it will, depending on how you shake it, not skip. Right. However. If you shake it, if you bump it a bit like this, it's not going to skip. Um, of course, if you keep bumping it long enough that the laser cannot replace itself, it will eventually skip. If you rotate it like this, there's not too many MD units that will be able to stand the rotation, twist, shake for very long. Even I've, I've, I've yeah. never experienced skip, though, with a mini disc. Uh, Have player. you ever walked with them in a pajama sort of trouser? No. <laughs> You need to do that. Okay. So here's how I... Well, I let I, me just put this. Things to do. Walk, yeah, things to do. Please write this down. In pajama. He's okay, not even okay, writing that. That's right, a fake, got, that's got, a got, fake pen in his hand. Okay. Right, here's how I found... Actually, um, back in Sweden, I had the MZR37. That was my first unit that didn't break. And I mm-hmm. found out quickly by putting it in my pocket, because I liked, I just like things in my pocket. I was taking a jog, and it skipped 
immediately. But that was because I hit play and then ran. Uh, you got to give it, you got to let the memory load up. Mm -hmm. And that thing is supposed to have 40 seconds of memory, but that also scans 40 seconds all the time, constantly. Right. And the later units, they would scan ahead 40 seconds and then shut down and then scan ahead again after 40 seconds. And then you got units like this, which are high MD. So they yeah. can read, as you know, the, basically they read um, uncompressed 16 bit discs. Yeah, so that would be like a CD, extremely yeah. high quality audio right. on, on, on those. Yes. And um, they will do 40 seconds of skip for that thing too. No, I, I don't own any uh, okay. high MD players or discs i'm and, I, and and even though i i have many um mdlp players okay i try not to use the mdlp yeah so I, i'm 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 uh, i'm all about sp and, I'm and, all mono, about, real, I, I, and mono those, those, those are that's my two go-tos man i i don't fool with the md and all this yeah. nonsense MD, uh, uh, i mono record awesome. i record podcasts excellent to be archived excellent. on many, on many discs so there's a there's a show I'm I'm listening to right now. It's called the the point of convergence, um, and it's one. it's um it's a it's a show about um, uh, consciousness, reality, and UFOs. Okay. Um, and what I do is I I record them in mono. So I mm. put I got epi episodes five through eight on this disc. Okay. Uh, but it's it for me it's like um, you know if. The internet goes down, or he he can't right. he he deletes his feed. He deletes his. De I got it. Yeah, you got it. The mm -hmm. guys, you can't stress this enough. And even if you're even if you're not worried about world going down, you're not worried about someone shutting off your Twitter. You're not worried mm -hmm. about people spy on you. Having a physical copy. There's um the first time I ever thought about this was I was working an audio distributor in 2012, and then I had to re train my replacement. And it was a, an older gentleman. He's about, at the time, he was 65, mm -hmm. coming in to replace me at the time, 33 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was saying that one of the problems that the modern company has is they don't keep physical copies of anything. It's right. all on email. And when something goes down, <laughs> it's, it's down. You know? yeah. And so he was, he was uh, telling, telling me how good faxes were. And I was like, at the time, I was like, come on, man. But then I thought about it. And it's, uh, <laughs> at least it's a physical copy, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about physical media, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm like a, a lunatic with, I, you know, I got, I'm, I still collect Blu-rays. Um, I have a huge vinyl collection, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm out of my mind with this stuff. And, and, you know, I, I tell friends and family and, and they're, they're like, well, but why just use Spotify? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, they, they don't get it. They, it, it, it just doesn't click for them. What mm -hmm. I find actually interesting, there's actually a bit of there's a bit of a crosstalk here. Um, so Blu-ray, you're you said you're a Mac user, is this correct? I am. Yes. Okay. So do you remember what G Steve Jobs said about Blu-ray? There's a bag of hurt. Bag of hurt. So mm -hmm. I actually have not published it yet, but I um, will finally do. I've got a lot to say about high high mini disc, and while I have a bunch of high mini mini disc stuff, including decks, you can mm -hmm. put in your oh, CD wow. and just yeah. a one to one copy. That have, of course, optical as well. We've mm -hmm. got two of those. Um, I've got. By the way, um, I, if you saw my review of this, I don't know none did, of your none yeah. of your review none of your listeners. I, there's no way they saw this. But guys, I, I saw he, it. He did. He saw it. This is this is a direct. Was it? I saw it. Did it change your mind? Um. See, it, the, 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 here's what gets me with 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 yeah. IMD is that I I don't want to be fooling with form. I I don't ever want to have the problem where. I grab a disc and I say, I want to, and I throw it in a player yeah, 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 yeah. and it doesn't work. It doesn't I, work. I, I, yeah. I don't want to deal with that. I, I want to put this in any player that I have yeah. and have it and have it work. Um, so that's why I'm very reluctant to get on the high MD bandwagon. Not because I don't think it's great and it's awesome. Yeah. And it's just, I don't want to put a disc in and it's not going to work. I want it to work on everything. That, that's my problem. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a, okay. That's a, the, the number one reason. I cannot commit to high mini disc. The number one reason, uh, uh -huh. you if you format your disc for high mini disc and you suddenly got to do SP high or high SP or whatever it is called. By the way, for all <laughs> for all the mindsets uh, for for all Agera's <laughs> listeners, that's like a it's like a slightly more compressed version of the original MD recording, but over a larger disc or on a reformatted disc, and then you can yeah. get instead of seventy four or eighty minutes of a recording, you can get something like hundred. 
Yeah, it's pretty vast, I think, right? 130, something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty huge. But I have thought long and hard, and I'm going to spill the beans about what I will call that video, and it will be called High Mini Disc, A Bag of Hurt. There you go. Because there's, apart from the hardware, now here's here's how I'm going to advertise, and this is, the, this is a preview of a video okay. that may come out in like a month. This hardware, by the way, and I know you don't jog around mm -hmm. in pajama style pants to take garbage out. By the way, in Japan, the garbage is not in front of your house. It's, it's some hundreds of meters down the road. So, so you have to walk. Out, to, yeah. So you've got to walk. The dump, you know, and sometimes I like to listen to mini disc yeah. on the way to the garbage. There's no correlation between mini disc and garbage. <laughs> but uh, when I put it in my pocket, it'll skip. It will skip. So I'm answering the question to m medieval. It will skip. Medieval. It will skip. However, with a high mini disc unit, it's designed to not skip for 40 seconds of high mini disc uh, content. So that is five times the amount of information on a single high mini disc disc. So if you uh -huh. put in an SP recorded disc, right. it's not 40 seconds, it's 160 or, or 200 seconds. Oh, wow. So they do, I've never had one skip even in the pajama pants going oh, to the garbage. That, that's awesome. So that is the number one. That's how I can recommend high mini disc for sure. Mm. Yeah. So if if you were to get a, a high MD recorder or player, but yeah. only yeah. use it to play back yeah. just standard it's, mini discs, it's worth you get, it. you get you get the benefit that way. There's also one more benefit is that um, now Sony don't have the best amps. Some of them have if you use well, I don't know what sort of headphones you use. If you if you if you tend to listen to like mm -hmm. big big headphones like this, or if you use earphones. Um, but if you're using sensitive earphones, every single Sony disc or unit out there, except for the MZ EH1, which no one can afford, which was the first player-only unit for high mini disc. Um, I sold mine for 800 bucks, by the way. Yeah, um, they, they go for a pretty one, penny. Well, I saw one go for 1700 um, just like wow. a month later. Yeah, well, that bad boy there only barely hisses through the most sensitive earphones. However, all Sony units hiss to a certain extent, and the high mini disc units hiss less so my my favorite player the yes. one that i use quite often is is this one. Oh, the three three the three three yeah. yeah um i mean it's only standard right it's yeah. not even it's not even um uh, mdlp on this which is fine because i don't use it um <laughs> this, the, this is a more. this is a great little little yeah. uh, little player uh it's light it's small it just takes a regular double a battery and um it's it's awesome you can put in a, a regular mini disc or one of those gumstick batteries as well into it. Uh, can you? No, I, I think, think so. it's just it's just the um, just the regular. Show us one, the battery. One of these things. Oh, the battery compartment there. Yeah, it's got the. And you just oh, no, you can it. right in the bottom. I think I I used to have that, so I had that unit. And you, you can really put a regular one? Yeah. You that, know what? I think it was one of the. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're right. I didn't even realize that. Welcome to the channel, man. Welcome I to the channel. I did not even realize that. I've always just been using the, the you know the the because I mean yeah, it works. Um. But yeah, this is a nice one. You just throw it in your pocket. You got the yep. little controller. You can, you know, hang out, clip onto your jacket or whatever, and, and away you go. You're, you're off to the races. You know, it's awesome. And oh, yeah. uh, it sounds great, super portable, and hyper privacy. Yes. Nobody knows what you're listening to but you. But you. Yeah. You know, this is a couple of times I've heard you talking about privacy here. Um, uh -huh. So, so what is it? What? what? Well, I'm going to crack open a. What are you drinking, by the way, uh, Nathan? What are, you, what are you? What are you consuming this evening? What I am consuming here, uh, my my what kind of libation friend. are you imbibing? Big libation. <laughs> what I'm going to use a very fake accent the, because this is my accent. But uh, the libation that I am uh, decanting into my mouth from time to time is called Yona Yona, which Yona is a pale ale out of Japan. It's like Japan's uh, what is it called? Uh, craft brewery market mm -hmm. is tiny. So basically, you can go from tip to tip. And yeah. the only one that's not like Asahi or Kirin Sorry. or one mm -hmm. of the big three ones is this yeah. Union. Yeah. And they're biggest craft by a long time. They're oh, okay. Yeah. Let me see here. I have a, this is a Mexican not, beer. Okay. Modelo Negro. Uh, okay. And it's uh, it's delicious. Uh, Arriba. So, so I'll be opening this right now. Oh, I, I do like uh, Asahi, by the way. That's, I think that's, that's a, it's a nice dry. Uh, it is very dry. It's, it's, it's very, very dry. It's very tasty, so. And to anyone else, I'll, I'll just, just oh, show everyone the, the wonders of how to pour pour the pour a successful pint. Ah, he's putting it in a glass. I'm drinking out of a can. Yeah. All these cultured people come onto yeah. the channel, and I don't know how to don't know how to show up. 
Drinking, Drink, drinking without a glass is so uncivilized. <laughs> I could add a straw. I could add a straw. How's that? <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do the beer with a straw. Uh, Man, I got I to gotta just top it up here. Slow. He's slow. So it's just going to. There we oh, go. Oh, look at that. It's, it's a thing of beauty, Nathan. Look at this. It's a thing uh, of beauty. It is, it is beautiful. Look that is. That. It's, okay, it's, fine. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't even know what my beer looks like. It's, un, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's. <fun>. Uh, <laughs> It's like a, a crystal Pepsi, probably just clear. Uh, um, you know, it, it tastes so. Cheers, tastes cheers, cheers. I think, yeah, cheers. Um, so, since or come oh, by, right. yes, uh, that, that sounded good. It sounded that like hit, a good beer. That hit the spot right there. So, okay, so that's the that's the point where we talk about privacy. Yes. As we brag to the world what we're drinking. Exactly. Um, I hope everyone in the uh, in the chat is joining us and cracking open a cold one while we. Uh, oh yes. Uh, let's, let's let's talk a little bit about the time difference, man. Because this 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 is, I mean, when when you said for us to get together, I was like, that's a great <laughs> idea. I'd love to talk to you, but aren't you like you know on another planet somewhere, like like thousands of hours in the future? Actually, you know what? It's quite interesting the way you that that there there's some serious truth to that. So. I'll just give you an illustration of how I would describe the different plan I'm on. Okay, uh-huh. so when I go digging in the sand, you know how you, you would dig in the sand? I don't know what it's like in England yeah. or America. Well, mm-hmm. I do know what it's like in America. You dig in the sand, you're like, I'm digging to China. You yeah, don't yeah, dig yeah. to China in Japan. We're so far away that you dig to Brazil. So, oh, shit, to Brazil. Yeah, we dig to, that's the, that's the country we dig that's... to when we dig in, the, not we, I'm not Japanese, obviously, but, yeah, uh, but when they dig, they dig to, to Brazil. So it's it's far. What time mm-hmm. is it for you right now? Uh, right now it is uh, 8:25 p.m. on Saturday night. It does. That sounds. That's a decent time. So I'm uh, I'm half past one basically right now. Uh, the next day, by yeah. the way. It's warm. So you're you're in Sunday. How is Sunday, by the way? I'm I'm I'll I'll see it tomorrow. Okay. So you see this window here? Uh-huh. That's actually open to the sun right now. Oh, wonderful. Yes. It's a, I I, can, I I have a window over here, but it's 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 pitch black outside. It's dark. And we got zero zero forty four twenty five in the UK as well for uh, medieval. Yeah, oh, no, we, for we, full auto. For full oh. auto. We got some some UK watchers. Uh, okay. Hello, chaps. How are you? Awfully nice. <laughs> pip pip and all that. What? Uh, they're they're all they're all on. That's great. Great. Uh, great cover where you're from, by the way. Already. Um. Yeah, we can talk about that. So I'm, I'm originally from South Wales in the UK. Uh, I moved to California in uh, ninety three. Ninety three. 1993 and i've been here ever since and, and uh, I'm, I'm coming up for parole pretty soon <laughs> so uh <laughs> how how so your has your voice changed a bit since then oh yeah it's changed a lot i mean um since i've been here uh and it was partly because i have a little bit of a parrot ear where i'll, I'll kind of unca- unconscious unconsciously mimic those around me if i'm with if i'm in yeah. a place for any length of time yeah. Um, so that I had that going on, but yeah. I also, I also made a conscious effort because I got so tired of whenever I spoke to anyone, them saying, Oh my God, where are you from? I love your accent. <laughs> and it, it got really old. Yeah. So then I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to hear that anymore. So, so I changed, uh, my voice and now this is the way I talk for real all the time now. Well, I have, um, I can brag about this. One thing is that mm-hmm. no matter where I've gone, no one's ever said that they like my accent. So, uh, <laughs> I've never <laughs> had to change too much, there you but go. yeah, we, I remember, uh, so my, my family, so I was born in Sweden. Um, but to American parents, we moved to America pretty, I was still a tiny little guy mm-hmm. and then to Canada. Um, but I remember when we moved to Canada, there was a lot of English people around back then. No more. There's, there's no English anywhere. But there was a lot. And yeah. uh, and but they wouldn't be like walking down the streets and be like, there's an Englishman. Yeah. It wasn't like English from New York. It was like mm-hmm. they would show up and you'd be like, oh, this person not Canadian. And everyone would be saying, this, I love your accent. It's really right. great. And yeah. they'd even say, where are you from? <laughs> I think I think in the in the what the seventies and the eighties, yeah. there, there was a lot of uh, British people that emigrated to Canada yeah. and, and Australia. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was the the two main destinations because I think around that time, both Canada and Australia were, were yeah. they wanted to, to get people from Europe to move to their countries for some reason. Uh, that was uh, that's those days are over, man. <laughs> now it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but back back in back in the seventies and eighties, I think that's what it was. There's a lot of people that bailed, you know. That's right. They had enough of the rain, and they think that's it. I'm going. I'm going to sunnier climes, 
and they, oh. they, they got the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Sunnier um, climbs. Let's go to Canada. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's sunny. You just got you got cold in winter. That's all right. We got well, by I, the way. There is a Canadian in the in the chat. Oh, this okay. Guy, Moonshine cool. graffiti. I know him in real life. And um, medieval is uh, in Canada in C Canada in Canada. Canada. He's, got he's another. In, he's in, he's in uh, Montreal right now. My, medieval Montreal. Is in Montreal. Uh, uh, we, maybe we can get the uh, the real Canadian, the moonshine graffiti guy. Maybe he can say something in French in the in the chat or not. Anyway, mm -hmm. so privacy. Let's do privacy yeah, after okay. we basically doxed both cool. of us. Yeah. All right. So huh, wait, what do you, what do you oh, want to talk oh, about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I want to talk about mini disc. So let's just okay. go. You were you were before we cracked open. Okay, I cracked open the can, <laughs> and then you yeah. decanted the thing properly yep. into the, the thing. Bottle. You had some sort of nice descriptive word <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, to, to describe it all. W w the last word that we had said while we're talking about Medias was privacy. Yes. And, uh, what? Yeah. Let's talk about. No, we, we've already discussed. We've already mm -hmm. discussed. Like, for instance, no one knows what you're listening to. But is there anything farther? Or and your iTunes count, iTunes stuff doesn't know and all that. Um. Well, you know, I, I was saying about like, uh, like Blu-rays and stuff, you know, I, I have an awful lot of Blu-rays and, and DVDs and the like, yeah. but, um, these, these things also, you, you, you know, you, if for most people, when they want to watch a movie on TV, they fire up Netflix or, or whatever streaming service they have and they watch the movie. Um, but all that information is what kind of movies you like, right, how, right. Long you, how long you watch the movie, yeah. what, what you're into, um, you know, how long you, did you, do you watch a movie from beginning to end? Do you watch 20 yeah. minutes? Then, you know, then take, then watch the next 20 minutes a day later, all of this information, it's valuable, valuable information that's harvested and, and put into your profile so they can sell you things or, 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 or cater to what they perceive your needs to be. Um, and while that's super convenient, it's also super creepy, <laughs> you know, it's like what I watch and what I listen to is my business. Right. Right. Not anymore, man. Not anymore. <laughs> well, you got, it, it, it still can be, but you got to yeah. work, you got to work at it. <laughs> right. It's right. not, it's not an easy thing to do. I was thinking yeah. also like, um. You know, you know, there's a blessing for not being on Twitter anymore. Um, I do, I do use Telegram, and people link to yeah. Twitter stuff all the time. And it's, uh, it's one of the frustrating things. And this is not directly related to Medias, but it's like um, everyone has to have some sort of opinion on every sort of thing that's going out on in the world. And uh, these companies, like Oreos and other snack things, now they got to have some sort of opinion on this or that. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. I just, want, I don't, I don't even want my cookies anymore. But uh, I used to just want my cookies and now I'm thinking about it. It's like, if I buy Oreo cookies with the, from what I, listen, you might know more about this than I do w with a debit card that has a chip on it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that like relay the fact that maybe this person named Nathan has bought Oreo cookies to somebody. Sure. See, yeah. I don't know much about that. What? No, everything you do every day yeah. of your life is is harvested and stored away. You know, when you purchase something, when you send an email, when you send a text, when you make a phone call, when you go right. to a website, when you tweet something, when you read a tweet, everything is is archived. Right. Every everything. Um and stored away and created creates a profile on you. You know, have you have you noticed that you'll go to a website and you'll click on, I don't know, a new pair of shoes. Right for like five seconds and then you'll go about your day and yeah. then you'll notice for the rest of the day, you'll be getting ads for yeah. new pairs of shoes. Unless you're not on Facebook. Of course, no, if you're just browsing no, the web. It, it, ha it happens. Yeah, it doesn't right. matter. It happens even if you're not on Facebook. Is there any um, way to get like deke this out at all? Deke, by the way, is a, is a Canadian word. It means to like go to the left or the right. Uh huh. Um, this also happens. Uh, the It gets to the point where when the, 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 the machine learning, when, when the algorithm ha garners enough information about you, right. um, it can actually make predictions on what you're going to buy, what you like. And sometimes it can be quite unnerving because you can actually think of something like, oh, you know what, I, hmm. I might want to, and then you'll, and, and what you're thinking of will actually appear <laughs> In in the web web and, I, and I'm, I've experienced this and, and you're giggling so I'm assuming you have, <laughs> um, and it's, it's it's a little disconcerting because you're like well I just thought of that right now how how would they know to to present this to me you know I just had the thought and there it is on the screen how is that possible, um, but it's because they they've garnered so much information about you 
that they can accurately make those kinds of predictions. Now maybe maybe like uh, with all these like if you, if you have a wearable, my wearable is a little bit old, um, but if you have like a wearable, shock, yeah, shock, yeah. If you got a wearable, maybe they like can like be like, oh, this guy's pulse is higher, and he's always higher about eight p.m. when he has his beer, and when he has his beer, he's browsing about this thing. I think it's yeah. I think it's, uh, it's that connected. There's, there's all all of these points these dots of information throughout your life. Right. Mm. And, and, you know, back in the day, you, they could, the, the computing power wasn't there to, to make sense of all those dots. Right. right? So they couldn't, they couldn't mesh it together and make accurate predictions or, or make a, 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 a facsimile of who you are as a person. Right. Well, now they can. Oh yeah. And, and they can do it very, very accurately. Sounds a little bit like. Um, have you seen that show? I watched it for a little while. It's called The One Hundred, I think. No, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's not really worth it. But there was like, there's this world in the future. These people went up to a space station to escape radiation on the Earth, and then later on, something happened to the space station. The kids, like a hundred kids, had to come down to the Earth, and they they were able to survive it where people previously weren't because they're up in space, mm -hmm. and they were basically growing through that. And then one of the seasons there's this computer that starts downloading everyone or, or uploading them into some virtual city. Mm -hmm. And you find out the computer wants to do it because there's going to be some disaster that happens and kills everyone later on, which I, I have no idea how they face that. Um, but yeah, it was rapidly everyone, but when they, when their personalities were uploaded, then something came back and they started almost being evangelists for the system, mm -hmm. which is kind of, kind of a, a point I would I kind of want to talk about maybe a little bit later sure. like in terms of uh how do how how would I describe it I think when when I was sending you over some notes um I listen I'm mm -hmm. I am a photographer that that's a light over there that's a, a light and that's that's natural light over there to my left right. but I, I shoot cameras and I and uh some audio stuff basically for a living and do magazine stuff like that but uh mm -hmm. I'm not I'm I'm not I never really had thought very deeply about the world, about what I perceived of the world until very, you know, pretty maybe the last three or four years. Okay. And uh, I started thinking about it, and from everything, yeah, fine. Like what you're talking about, things that you buy, there's everything's tracked, etc. But I also just wonder, like, in terms of when I'm when I'm going through the world and I hear a word that I'm used to hearing, or I, I see a thing. Let's say it's just a Let's see. I'm trying to think of a good example, but it, it's hard to bring up a, a specific example exactly. But let's say if I hear some sort of trigger word, and if I if I react in a certain way, I'm wondering if it's me or if it's like sort of outside sort of programming that makes me react to it in the same way that do you, for, mm, do you mean do you mean like you know um, when you buy a new car? And yeah. suddenly, when you're driving the car, you're seeing that make of car everywhere. There, that is that is something for real. That's that's something real. Yeah. Right. So kind of like yeah, we we all, we all experience that, right? You know, or uh, where you, you otherwise you you'd, you'd never you'd never notice the car, but right. now that you now that you have one, and you're driving on the freeway, you you see, oh my god, there's another one, there's another one. You, so, um, so the. There's two things that, that could be happening here. Uh, right. The, 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 the main thing is, is or the, the most logical one, is that right. um, your mind is more receptive now that you're, you have the new car, and suddenly you know, you're right. naturally going to notice all the other cars like yours driving around. Right. right. That's probably what's going on. The other one, which is a little out there, is that um, the simulation is reflecting it back in other He's words you, you you've 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 kind of you're kind of hitting the boundary of the simulation <laughs> all right all right yeah so the simulation okay i don't see i don't know i don't even know if it's out of bounds what i was listening to i don't know if um do you know a channel called uh oh no i'm a uh, quantum of conscience no a is, it, is it a youtube channel no, He's a YouTuber, not, yeah. Not, not familiar with it, no. Um, he, but he talks about a thing called the screen. Okay. I don't know sure if we want to get this far, but he calls it. Like, he talks about this thing called the screen, which is how we perceive reality. Uh -huh. Um, and he and he talks about he he's listen. I, he's I think he's a, a 
a truther or something like that. I, I don't know what that is to tell you the truth, okay. but he, he, he labels himself that. And, um, uh, but he talks about this thing called the, the screen and the screen is how the system tries to lure you into itself when your whole <laughs> reason for existing is try to escape the screen. I don't know if that's a system you're talking about. Is that the system? Um, it, it, it might be. I, I don't know. I mean, um, we are kind of pre-designed to be attracted to, to screens. But I don't know whether, whether that's, you know, we're, we're sitting in front of one right <laughs> yeah. now. But, you know, like, um, you know, tablets and phones and screens okay. and televisions, they're, they're, they, 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 they're kind of hypnotic devices. Um, right. I, I remember, you know, when I was a kid and when my children were, were very small mm. and, you know, they'd sit in front of the TV with the cartoon on and you could be like, hello. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're zoned out. Uh, they're they're hypnotized, you know. Um, so yeah, there is there's, there's there's definitely something about the screen that kind of pulls us into it. All right, yeah. For him, I think when he's talking about screen, like I, I'm sure that's part of it, but I think he thinks of it like we're this is all like oh, a simulation. Oh, I see. Maybe, I see what you mean. Sure. I'm not sure. Listen, I yeah. haven't listened to it for about a about a year. It was he when I listened to him. It, when I listen to the, listen, I, I'm as human or maybe less human than other people. What I mean is like um, the powerful narratives or or very interesting narratives. I, mm -hmm. I that that guy, the Canadian guy in there, he knows um, kind of pull at me quite a bit. And uh, so when I listen to stuff like that, I'm I, it uh, gets me too excited about things. So I start <laughs> pull. Back. Don't listen to the guy talking about the screen. No, it's just, good. It's good uh, to kind of you know to, to to get get these ideas rattling or right. whether or not it's true who knows but but it's it's a good mental exercise to, right. to, to play around with right it's right it's it's i think it's very healthy to ask yourself unanswerable right. questions right right some of them are un unaskable um <laughs> oh, yeah. or an answer an unaskable question there you go ask ask <laughs> ask or answer yeah, yeah yeah exactly oh, so, uh, by the way um there's uh there's, you know, there's one other thing that uh, we had a question actually, by the way, in the stream. I just want to answer that first. By the way, mm -hmm. way up, you'll scroll up. I don't know if you guys uh -huh. have you. Can you see the chat? I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. It's down after the konnichiwas were going on, and after there was uh, a guy responding to uh, French with a howdy, I think. Oh no, that was before. I said, "What's the best Mindius model?" Ah, yeah, right. it's like we're jumping around here just mm -hmm. a bit. What's the best Mindius model that has good sound compared to its peers, but hasn't become super expensive collectible item? Okay. So the one, can you show your 33 again, please? Sure. I'm going to get a link from my website. This just one quickly. right here. This is the, uh, uh, the, we should let everyone know this is just a player. You cannot record with this. All, all, this just plays discs. Um, but it's perfect. Oh, I even opened it. You, you pop it open like that. Um, but this is perfect. Just, you know, throwing your backpack, you know, and away you go. And you're you're listening to some tunes or some you know audio books or what's, pod, what, podcasts, whatever. What's that model? This is the uh, MZ E three three. Yep. Oh, you know what? I found out just now. I haven't actually published the um, the test results for that. So, by the way, um, any any y'all who who are just coming for the first time, so I do a lot of um, hardware tests of a lot of dip mm -hmm. for for years now. Fi actually, since since about 2010. So what I do is I take parallel, you take a, a cable. What's a good example? I don't have one here, but um, I don't have it here. Nathan, it's not a good example. All right. So if you had if you had uh, just a cable like this, you plug yeah. this into a Y splitter mm -hmm. and um, a Y, so, or the word this could be a Y splitter. So half of the signal would go out to headphones and half right. of the signal would go out to something else. What I, the something else I use is called a Lynx Hilo or Hilo and it's an AD converter. So analog to digital. Right, and then what I would do is I'd plug that into the AD, and then the other side into a pair of headphones. Uh -huh. What that allows you to do is simulate the load of a pair of headphones, whilst also simultaneously recording the output of the player or the recorder or whatever audio device it is. And so you can plug in different headphones and then watch how a pristine quality that isn't driving a pair of headphones degrades when you plug in a pair of headphones. Um, what sort of is the optimal load for that pair of um, for that recorder or player, et cetera, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I've documented this since 2010 or, or 11 on different websites. And currently on omimage.net, I 
don't have the results for the MZE33, but they're very, very good. In fact, that's one of the best in terms of you have your stock signal, you plug in your pair of headphones. There's basically no pair of headphones when I tested this that really make the bass go up or down or the mm -hmm. mids go wacky or the highs or even the stereo compressed too far. So that's a great one. There's a little bit of hiss. The other, and the MZ33 is not an expensive unit. I think- No, no, it's, it's, it's you can get, um, uh, if you go on eBay, you can get one of these like in ridiculously good condition, condition right, right. and for, for rel relatively cheap. Right. Um, because it's just the player. Um, right. So you, you can pick one of these up easy, no problem. But there are some players that are very expensive, like the yes. MZH1 <laughs> that I talked about, uh -huh. which went recently in Japan for around 1700 bucks. is not cheap, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, so my NZE33 went, I think it was less than 20 bucks. It's definitely worth more than that. Um, it's it's all aluminum except for the, the battery cap. And there's the only problem I have with that unit is the battery cap doesn't hold that well into place versus yeah, some other yeah. units it's, i mean it's I, I i know what you mean it is a bit like flimsy but you can yeah. just, just and it, when you when it comes off it, it is kind of yeah yeah kind of yeah but once it's once you seal it though once you close it it's it's actually yeah. pretty pretty sturdy but when you open it to remove the battery it, it does flop around a little bit yeah, yeah. Sure. it's got some good controls on it um show the bottom the triforce control um, on the, yeah on, on the, the back control. here on this yeah. You have all the controls there for, you know, play, uh, stop, fast forward, rewind, and all that stuff. So on the back of the player. Yeah. You, you also get the, um, uh, what, what are these called? What do you, what do you, how would, what are these like a remote thing? Remote, or something? Yeah. yeah. Remote. And you have a toggle right here to play and stop. And, and then you have an LCD screen, which gives you the track titles and yeah. all, all that good stuff. So essentially, you could just, you know, put this in your pocket or in your backpack, and then you just have this. That's available to you. Plug your headphones in here, and put your headphones on or your earbuds, and away you go. And the actual device itself is—it's out of the way. It's—it's it's, you know someplace else. Now the the one problem I have with that the only the only, okay here's back in the day you you know if you back in the day there were not a load of different things you could get with your Windows player. So in terms of headphones, mm -hmm. there were just a few. There were no $3,000, $10,000 earphones. So you wouldn't be worried so much about ultimate sound quality. But also when you plugged in your, when you plugged in your remote control, you could do all the, as, as Garrett mentioned, yeah. mm -hmm. you could do all of the controls externally. Yeah. But you also had the earphones that came with them were often very short. I think I brought a pair of earphones. Did I leave them a pair of earphones? So. The cable, sorry, it's just right here. Um, it's from a Sharp Alvi unit. Uh, it's it's messed. It's kind of curled up with another earphone at the moment. So I'm going to try to unravel this. But the the units usually earphones are the cable is somewhere between 1.8 meters and 1.2 meters. Usually, mm -hmm. not 1.8, 1.10 and 1.2 meters, and that's long enough to go from your pocket on a regularly, you know, a, a man that's not too tall but not too short either, and that goes all the way up to his ears. Just a moment, but. The units, the earphones that came with most units had a short cable that was around 80 centimeters, yeah. which is like this. And then the earphones would then go up to your ears in either a Y split or a J split. And mm -hmm. the J split is this one where one side is shorter than the other. Um, and the reason that that would be is because you would use a remote and you'd clip it onto your shirt like this. But right. a lot of modern headphones, they don't have that anymore. So the problem is that you end up getting a cable that's like you got to wrap it up. You know, what do you do with it? Unless you put your, unless you put your mini disc in your backpack, which is a good idea because it won't mm -hmm. skip. But if you put it in your, you got it. A mini disc should go in the pocket. I, mm -hmm. I it's got to go in the trouser pocket because if you want to walk around, you got to have it in your trouser pocket. But anyway, yeah, the MZ E three three is a very good sounding unit. The MZ E five five is even slightly. It doesn't hold load quite as well, but it's less hissy. So the MZ E55, if you don't have a lot of money, I see them going all the time in Japan yeah. for around $15. Um, if one's in pristine shape, I've seen them go up to $50. So that's five zero, and a cheap one would be 15 I have two of them. I recommend them to everyone that's looking for a cheap one. Uh, they do hiss a little bit, but hold load very well. They have all the controls for the mega bass and the normalization of the audio on the side. Uh, and I've never seen one that's in such bad disrepair that doesn't work. They were robust. Mm -hmm. So... I um I I bought uh, this is the uh, let me see what's what's the thing the uh, the MZ R thirty seven this thing oh so I bought I bought this um nice. this this was old new stock 
Oh. So it was brand new and it had never been opened. It was, it, I don't know whether it was in someone's closet for 30 years or, or, uh, in, in, a, in a warehouse somewhere. Uh, but it, I, I'm, I am the original owner, <laughs> even though this thing was made 20 something years ago. Yeah. Um, so I bought this brand new, um, in the box. Um, and, and obviously as, as it's new, it works, you know, flawlessly. Um, and I, I really like this one. And one of the things I really like about it is that it has a line out, um, yeah, that's right. Port. So you can you can hook this up and get like ridiculously awesome sound quality yep. from it, and, and it has a kind of retro kind of futuristic yeah. kind of vibe to it. So it's kind of cool. The screen is kind of shit. Let's be honest. The screen is stupid. It's too, it's too small. Yeah, but it's too small. But the machine itself is is um is is great. And and I have another machine here, which I, I actually want to blame you for. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about this. Sorry about this. Well, I don't know what's coming. I I um I, I bought this purely on 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 watching one of your videos, and you're absolutely right. But this this is a beauty. Oh yeah, the this B1. is a beauty. So I I bought this. I watched one of your videos, and um, and you were raving about how how great yeah. this is with the, the build quality and everything. And uh, I found this. This is like like almost new. It looks yeah. completely yeah. brand new. It's just like a brand brand new machine um i bought this and uh, i love this this is a great one for recording my po recording podcasts uh in mono <laughs> in mono. mono this in is mono. mono is original is original lp2 guys so yeah. here it is yeah. yeah so um so yeah this was a good one with a little bag and everything so this is a good buy thanks thanks to you man you you, uh, you turned me on to that one the b100 you can put oh. in uh, regular batteries it gets good battery life has a good quality amp doesn't hiss a lot very robust the yeah. interface is a little bit more complicated than most recorders but it's very good the recording interface for it is good you've got speakers you have decent okay um stereo microphones you've got all the regular inputs it is Actually, you know, i was kind of surprised by the built-in microphones on that because i expected and it's like ah it's gonna be crap and it's just yeah. these dopey little microphones so so what i did was i put it on on my desk and i hit record and i just went about my day having just letting it record and i played it back um and um I, I was i was quite quite surprised i didn't think it would be as good as it was okay well it, it is good. It's just that it just, sometimes I use like... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's a it's good, guys. That's it's good. You're, my, you're, you're talking night, night and day there now. Yeah. And, and what I do when I make my mono recordings, yeah. because we can't use the uh, the web mini disc thing, right. is I, I, use, I use this little thing right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one of those. So this is USB to optical. Right. So the USB goes into your PC or Mac. Right. Um, and then the optical cable comes out here and right. goes in, goes into, and then the optical will go into the, the mini disc right. recorder yeah. and, uh, and, and away you go. And it sounds great. And for, for all of your regular listeners an optical, it's just, it's like a laser going in and it mm -hmm. just sends the audio exactly down to the millisecond. And if you have the right connection, it'll even add track marks, but that's another cable. Um, yeah. it's basically supposed to be a one-to-one -one copy, um, so, do you want to talk about decks? I have a, I have a mini disc deck okay. right here that I use yeah. to I use to record. Uh, I have a Panasonic Blu-ray player with yeah. an op optical out okay. going going into a um, what is it a, a JB nine forty the the Sony JB nine forty deck with the uh, the A track R or the A track three or whatever it is that what it says type DSP type R, uh, and it makes phenomenal recordings like oh, yeah. be beautiful beautiful recordings um i just got the new john carpenter cd um oh john know. carpenter yeah so, so, so i'm sorry man and <laughs> <laughs> and I, I immediately made like you know a, um a, a, an md of the album and I, right. I, lis I listened to the album first with through you know an md and it sounded based that's based beautiful yeah well uh beautiful. i got a whole bunch of different decks here i can't pick up the one that's actually right right here on my desk it's got new order and i don't know what we think about new order it's probably not john carpenter i like new order all right so i, I like yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, anyway you know what, dude, I, I, if you like if you like like ambient yeah. kind of you know vibey music i think yeah. you really i think you really enjoy john, john carpenter john carpenter okay guys just let me type for a second i'm gonna <laughs> ask John carpenter. I so, am, I'm so john carpenter is a, is the movie director that did uh, halloween and the thing and all that stuff you remember those movies those oh, i've never seen them 
Really? So he made he made all these are like tremendously famous horror movies in the eighties, uh, and he used to, he used to do all the music for the movies too for the yeah. like the soundtrack and it's all very synthesizer based. But now he doesn't make movies anymore. But so he's, he does, but he does make music, um, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's pretty good. I think I think you might you might uh, you might enjoy it. Is he is he kind of on uh, on some sort of level with like Brian Eno or any anyone like that or? Um, no, it, it's his music is is very dark. Okay, all right. Uh, and very um, it's hard to describe. It's it's his, his music is like a soundtrack to a horror movie that doesn't exist, <laughs> and it's very it's very synth ambient kind of. Okay. It, it's great. I love it. All right, well, John Carpenter, it's in my notes, guys. It might yeah. be in your notes at the end of the show. But uh, <laughs> hey, let's 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 ask you another question. Okay, we got we got oh punches punches crouches. Punches, crouches. Punches, couches. Is it crouches? Punches. Couches. Couch. I can't. He's, he's, uh, he's listing all the movies. Now, here's a movie you have to watch. Yeah. Sure. John Carpenter's They Live. They Live. I think that's even written down here, isn't it? Yeah, They Live. Yeah, oh, no, they actually. Live. So if, 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 you are, if you are conspiratorially inclined, <laughs> this is a movie that you have to watch. Have to watch. All right. You have to. All right. Hey, what, what do you think? Speaking of, let, let's get back to this for a couple of seconds. So, um, there, there, last week we're staying on the movie thing. Don't worry, I'm not ignoring okay. nothing. Okay, but uh, <laughs> but uh, s- speaking of conspiracy, conspiratorially inclined. So last week, um, Apple was it? They in- announced that they're thinking of putting Final Cut on. Well, I'm not sure if they announced it necessarily, but it was uncovered in some yeah. sort of document. Yeah, Apple it didn't announce, it, but it, but yeah. it uh, is a rumor. Yeah, a rumor. But uh, listen. Software seems to be going for a lot of different companies onto some sort of uh, subscription basis. Mm-hmm. But Final Cut, I use Final Cut. A lot of people use mm-hmm. Final Cut. Um, and it's not like, th- but it might become a subscription model in the future. Now, Adobe, yeah. um, which is the major software suite that I've used for a long time, has become subscription. Now, right. I'm not going to say that I owned CS2 or CS3 or CS, that's the last one I used, CS6. I'm not going to say that I owned those back in the day because I had a CD. I had a license, yeah. which doesn't allow me to own anything, right? But at the same time, uh, I, I had the feeling that maybe this is my problem. Maybe this is my problem. Maybe it's kind of sort of the, the, the people of the modern world think they own something when they have a license. I had the feeling that I owned my software, which I think is, re- can't say that word. You can say it. It's retarded. It's retarded to think that I own the software. But uh that's that's what got me off of Twitter one of one of the times, by the way. <laughs> Which was retarded. That was retarded. But uh, yeah, I I think that I own my software. It's it's totally not true. That this is obvious. But yeah. the whole rent, uh, I was gonna say diaphragm. That's not the word. Di, uh, there's some sort of di word the paradigm. It's not a okay. di word. Paradigm, the whole yeah. rent paradigm gets maybe more of a normie slushy brain like myself to think directly more that the thing that I thought I owned, I don't own and puts me into a new paradigm, which is to say, what do, and I, I started asking this, what do I actually, do I actually own anything? And not, I'm not saying owning is good or bad or anything like that, but uh, just to sort of tie this, the Apple thing where, you know, yeah. the subscription model. Yeah. So it, they're, they're thinking of, going subscription with final cut um, yeah whether or not it'll happen i have no idea but it's 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 likely that, that, that they might start going down that path right because um final cut uh was released i don't know what like god maybe 10 years ago now the, the new version final cut x right. um and you you'd buy it once and all the updates for the last you know 10 years or whatever yeah. Have been completely free. You 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 right. pay your your three or four hundred dollars to buy it, and then that's it. You're you're good. Um, whereas uh, Adobe with Premiere, you got you you got to rent it either monthly or annually yeah. to to keep keep it up to date. That's um, kind of like, oh sorry, no no yeah, but, but what your question was or your statement was you know what what do you own, right? Yeah. Well, and- very very little. Yeah, very you, you, you don't even own your house. I don't. I don't own my house. I mean, I have. No, the, no, I, no. I, but even if, house. even if you did, let's just say you, you had a mortgage, you paid it yeah. off, and you're like, yeah. "This is my house." God right. damn it! Yeah, you, you don't own it. The government could come in and remove you from that property. 
No, no questions asked. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting the feeling that that's, I mean, that I think several years ago, I'd be like, come on, man, you paid your, you know, but I, I'm getting the feeling. I'm getting the feeling that's way more true, and probably absolutely like it's it's beyond. <laughs> like the uh -huh. truth is even worse than that. Um, yeah, I mean, you pay my mortgage. By the way, got a mortgage. It goes on till I'm seventy. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I can't imagine like. No, I can totally imagine it. Being seventy, <laughs> I think I got something. They're like, no, no, you you said retarded on Twitter once. Yeah, you're like, out. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we're taking over. Um, now it's not to say that that would happen. Yeah, but but. It it could, it, yeah. It, it legally could happen. They they could take 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 your property from you. I hear that uh, in England now. I know that you're you've been. I, I say England. I, yeah. You're Wales, right? You're Wales. I'm Welsh, yeah. But you can say oh, the sorry. UK. But okay. I, I I haven't lived there for shit. How long a long time. time. A long time. Yeah. A while. Well, long I hear uh, that your driver's license or your your license to own a vehicle or something like that is like the license to <laughs> drive it a little bit, but it, it's not. Like even that, it's not a light. You, you don't actually own your car is what someone was saying a couple not of months ago. Yeah. I mean, we, we have, we have a bunch of people in the chat from the UK. Maybe they could chime in, chime in and, and, um, and let us know whether that's accurate or not. But, let let um, me translate this for them. Uh, yeah. Would any of you guys in the UK, would you like to like tell us what it's like to have a car in there? If you don't have a car or whenever, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It is you put in there. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you got your motor and you're driving it down a street, have you got, have you got to have a license for it or what? <laughs> just got, got your license mate yeah, or, you got your license or what what's the matter with you are you mental or what <laughs> um but yeah i i i think uh, i think you might be right i think um all all of these all of these laws and all of these things that are in place they're they're in place to benefit the status quo to benefit right. the powers that be everything i mean I, I think i said this on a podcast a couple of weeks ago where everything is done as a self-preservation tactic for That's the, 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 the hierarchy of power, right? Everything, every law, every, every action, it's all done as a self-preservation tactic to keep them in the position that they're in. Right. Whoa, whoa. them. Hey, okay. So what about maritime law? You know anything about that? Uh, no, not really. I don't know either. I just hear people talking about, listen, I'm not, I have round glasses that, that make my eyes look like they're really close uh -huh. together. Uh -huh. <laughs> because my brain is like compressed in the middle. So I don't have a lot of like uh, galaxy brain takes on this whole thing. However, I hear people talk about maritime line and the maritime law took over landed law or something like that. And maritime law is like sort of the law of the pirates and the law of the sea and the law of the captains. And that we suddenly are not who we think we are, are the law that the maritimers apply to us, the, the whoever they're the captains or the, the pirates mm -hmm. or whatever, applies to us as sort of a people that live in the cargo. And uh oh, yeah, yeah, we're 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 property. We're, property. we're like um yeah, we're we're property. Well, it's the same with your, your name, your birth yeah. certificate, it's all part oh, yeah. of uh, you know, like a, a contract that you're you're a part of that you had nothing to do with, but you're you're it's like a contractual obligation to the state. Right. Well, so how would you how would you relate this back, let's say, to something like something like mini disc? Um, <laughs> um <laughs> no that, is that for instance, this bad boy here, I own, I think I own, I'm not sure. Like mm -hmm. if this is a screen that I don't own anything and I'm not even here, but if it's not a screen. I've got some sort of plastic and metal between my hands and I have a recording. Unfortunately, the recording of this is the test signals that I use to test the software, okay. um, which I don't own. We just, we <laughs> established that. Uh, and, and my computer, I don't know. I, I, I bought it with money, but who knows what happens. But like, um, I re recently I've been into this music called Synthwave and I, I purchased mm -hmm. from England, by the way, from England, there's a... Um, there's a company called Time Slave Recordings, and they sell like it was like a hundred albums for like uh, what was it, 120 pounds. Oh, okay. And some of them are gold, and so I, I purchased this thing that I in my brain digitally my, or or physically, yeah. so and then you download them. Like WAV. WAV. You can download WAV, ALAC. Okay. It's from Bandcamp. So get, yeah, Bandcamp is awesome. So you can get high high quality downloads. Yeah. 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 You can get yeah. I think I think they're limited to sixteen bit, but I could be wrong. But anyway, I, I download all this stuff. I'm I've, I'm like using my net. I'm using that Net MD app to mm -hmm. like just 
shift all that stuff right, on via right. my deck, by the way. My deck is an MDS GA JE780, uh, which you can plug into a keyboard if you want to manually type the the yeah, title, which is um, nice. Mine has the old PS2 connector you can plug okay. in. Yeah. But who you, when you have WebMD, what what are you going to use that for? You just you you just t- title everything on your on your computer, right? With the NetMD. Except when you want to get gapless playback for certain recordings, and then you got to use the old ah uh, yeah old yeah yeah yes yes yeah. So then you shift it over here, and you you you, ret- you retitle everything that you actually you uh, previously recorded on your CD MD deck. This one doesn't have a CD in there, but anyway, yeah. So I think I've got this music, and I'm enjoying it. And in in my head, I'm like, I'm beating the system because I downloaded it via Bandcamp. I got the the ALAC files, mm-hmm. and I got the and they're on my MD. And I'm not behind. Um, this is not a screen that I'm seeing. <laughs> this is how I'm going to try to shift that to make it kind of related in a bit to MD. Would you have any sort of? Would you critique that? No. Or do you think I'm on a? No, I I, I think uh, that that's a good little workflow you got there to to get it. To, you know, you download a high quality audio, you copy it on. Am I beating the system? Um, no, because they know you've downloaded the audio and they know uh, how much you paid for it and where you got it from. Card. And I have a PayPal account. Yeah. What you would need to do was, would be to, yeah. uh, pay with it with Bitcoin through a VPN and then download <laughs> it on, um, on a, on a laptop at a public Wi-Fi spot that you then copy the data from the laptop onto a thumb drive, ber- destroy the laptop and then. And then see, then then there'll be a problem with WebMD because the the WebMD application, we don't know whether whether he's logging all the files that are being copied, right? Whether or not he has a file somewhere saying, well, you know, Nathan copied this at this time. You know, he's got like some 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 cat file, some you know document. I mean, it's 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 completely probable. It's it's in fact, it's highly likely that on the back end there is some logging going on as to what what kind of files are being transferred to the net MD now, whether or not he's doing, maybe he's got it set up. So, you know, every week it deletes the file. I, I don't know, but, but it's likely that something's being recorded. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, 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 I get what you mean. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting shivers on the back of the top, top of my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. I was just enjoying my synth wave. And now I'm like, I, I got to go back to, I, yeah. I don't have, I got to get a bicycle power generator here to, to <laughs> <Yes. start playing. laughs> Well, that's the thing. I mean, all this stuff is great and it's super yeah. convenient and yeah. it's you know it's it's easy and it's wonderful, uh, but it's it's not secure. You're you're yeah. you're giving away everything. Yeah. Uh, but you but you, you can't. You, that's that's the balancing act we have to do, right? We have to balance security with with uh, with convenience, right? With, with uh, privacy against convenience. You, you oh, yeah. can't you can't have both. No, you can pick one or the other, or you can kind of try and balance somewhere in the middle. But you, but you cannot have both. Yeah, unfortunately. I had a friend over last week, a week and a half ago, and uh, he came over and he's like, Nathan, let's uh, let's start fire the old old fashioned way. I was like, all right, he's gonna bring over some matches. And he didn't bring over matches. He brought over a couple of pole, like sticks about this long, uh-huh. and then there was a tray made out of, made out of oh, uh, wood. You rub the sticks together yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Right? And we did this one, like. Oh, yeah? like and Sino man, and then he had a bow, and we did this, uh-huh. and then uh, we lit my grass on fire. There's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the winter, right? And uh, there's the five patches, of black patches on my on my grass. <laughs> and he's he's a very um, he's a stoic man, and mm-hmm. he's like, Nathan, I've started. <laughs> the the word in Japanese is kaji. It's like uh, it, it would it, it would be like it's not the fire you want. He's like, Nathan, I've started a fire. <laughs> I've started a fire, and I'm looking down. He's like patting all the wood. He's and, trying to put it out. And at first. I'm trying to react to him who has no, he has, there's, there's no reaction. I mean, it's just like he said, I've started a fire in the same way that he said something like the the sky is blue or something. So I was like, uh-huh. it took me a while to react. And then we, we got the water and we, we doused the place for a while. But yeah, we made some fires, man. Made uh, like, not yeah. just that. Like like good ones, and uh, I mean, that's some skill right there to do that. Oh, yeah. You know, most people have no clue how to do that shit. That that's that's some skill to kind of, you know, bang the rocks together and make fire. Well, that's it's kind of like that's kind of like how how people in the MD in the MD world they talk a little bit about when you connect your player up via optical mm-hmm. to the machine and then you hit record and play at the yeah. same time and you sync it and you right. make sure the sync audio is there to get all the track marks and then you type it back in. 
it was almost like that. Mm-hmm. It was almost like starting a fire like that, manually like that, like a man from some thousands of years ago. Yeah, yeah. like pre Web MD world. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's crazy though is that um, you know what what you're saying about your your MD workflow, how you get all your all your music onto your yeah. discs. Uh, a lot of people would say, oh, that's cumbersome, that's old-fashioned, it's silly, but they don't get it. It's also a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It's it's oh, yeah. enjoyable to do that stuff, you know, to, like, oh, yeah. curate it and organize it and, and label it and get it all oh, yeah. nice. And it's it's fun to do that. It's enjoyable, you know. I mean, if it was a pain in the ass, then you, you, wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be fooling with many of this. You'd be, you know, on Spotify. But you, you're doing it because you love it. You enjoy it. It's pleasurable. Do you uh, do you cut your own labels? Uh, like uh, print out your own uh, like? No, disc I, I, no I, I, uh, I'm I'm just like writing it on with a with a pen, right. you know. Right, right. Um, I did because uh, I, I I ran out of labels, so I did. I went to I found this guy in 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 the UK, and he. I say UK for all you people in the UK. It's, it's, in, it's in the UK. I found this place over there, and and he makes um, stickers. Nice. For the um, so I, I've been using these. These are pretty cool. Yeah, you know, so you can write them, just stick them on them. But no, I, I I've seen many sites where people like they they print the the album art and it, and it looks amazing. Yeah. You know, to do all that stuff. But um, I'm I don't thinking. Have, uh, now, what, what? Tell me what you think about this. Taking apart one of these discs carefully uh-huh. and then spray painting with a matte finish, black. If, for instance, for instance, if the album artwork is black. Yeah. Back and forth like this, leaving just this logo, and then printing the uh, the album artwork in in this part here, but using the back like because I've seen yeah I've seen some very good printed jobs where they put the the album artwork right here mm-hmm. and then they put it in a nice little um, case, and they have the album artwork everywhere and it looks great. But the, th- the one thing is, these sort of labels etc. weren't shown very well. But they didn't show up on a lot of the pre-recorded discs, where which were a lot of times sort of matte gray, yeah. and then you have the album artwork here, or some of them even had it printed mm-hmm. farther out. Uh, if you wanted to go whole hog, you'd have to put quite a bit of effort into it. And you know what? That you're right. That does sound annoying to I think some people. But I'm not sure what your first time titling a disc back in the day, '97. You would have to use. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was a pain in the ass. It was horrible. I, I um, I, I mean, I would label right. the titles. But it was always a nightmare, and and there was there was many times where I would record stuff, and in the back of my mind, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll 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 label it later," <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then and then I'd have like a stack of discs. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what the what the hell was on the discs, okay. you know? Because yeah, I'll I'll do it later. It'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. But you uh, you have to get to train yourself. Like the minute you finish your recording, you gotta yeah. label it right then and there. Because if you yeah. if you put it on the back burner, forget about it. It's done. Yeah. You, it, you'll yeah. never get to it. You know? Well, it's like it's like homework, you know. When you went to school, if you got behind on one assignment, and you were like, "Okay, I got to get that done before I get the next one done," yeah, you're probably gonna, you know, it's you snow. It off, yeah. yeah. You're gonna be, it becomes a chore. Yeah. Uh, um, in the U.S. in in the '90s, the the main mini discs that you could buy, like blanks, yeah, was, was like this the so, right, the, right. So, the Sony right. ones. These were these were like you know everywhere you went that sold mini disc, which which yeah. was wasn't a lot of places let's be honest um they would be like you get a five or a ten pack of these things oh yeah um but it was only in, it was only until i i you know i discovered when i rediscovered mini disc in, in and, and started getting stuff from from like ebay i found all these cool different colors and designs yeah. and all all this awesome stuff that uh you know you get all these different kinds of discs and it's great i love it there, you know, there's a there is a variety out there. There's stuff I think I yeah, don't think tons. anyone out there knows knows all the sort of different designs. My favorite, just the bog standard for me, is just the Bianca. Yeah, the black, the white ones. Yeah, yeah those are nice. White. They're beautiful discs. Yeah, really they're nice. there's there's nothing. They don't have weird colors. They don't have. It's not like you're going to be drawn to it because of the perfection of the design, it, it, except that it's per, it's perfect. The background on this one has mm-hmm. uh, orange, and there's a couple of different colors on them, but you you could if you want you could write a permanent marker and you would see it from a mile right. off, mm-hmm. or you could, you know and of course you could rub it away with alcohol later on, or you could do a dry erase and then get your pocket 
all messed right. up or that you're an MD player, but like they're just they're great. And then you got the, the clear ones. And um, see, where's my here's my new order? Let me just pop up my new order some moment here. This I, one I here. Noticed, I noticed a lot. This is a this is a Fuji a Fuji eight eighty thing. Oh right, right. I've seen those. Food, yeah, but I've noticed a lot of people who are into MDs. They um they love the look of the blank disc, right? Oh, they yeah. love they love the way it looks. So when they label it, they just label the right side there. Yeah, right there. Sure. Or they'll maybe put something on the back, like a little like a printed I label. Doing that. Interesting. But, but they leave the front clear because they just love the look of the um of the disc, right? Of the disc because they're so unique, you know? There's also if you pop the disc out itself, it's in um it sits, I'm not sure if all of you can see this, but right there, there's an aluminum, yeah. uh, there's an aluminum, it's tiny little like disc nubbin in, in there. Uh -huh. and that pops on to the, the reed, not the reed head, but like the spinning thing that's then read by the redhead in there. The redhead? The reed head in there. The, the redhead. Yeah, the redhead. There's a redhead the in redhead. there. The redhead. The redhead. The redhead. And uh, they look great when you pop them out. Of But if you pop them out, you're probably going to damage them. But they... Oh, I mean, I, I even found online, I even found like Hello Kitty discs, <laughs> which is which is kind of ridiculous. I bought yeah. like a, a box lot of discs and I got a bunch oh. of these on it. So, so I'm using, I'm using these yeah. discs just, to, I mean, the back, the back looks cool. Look how cool the back looks. Look at that. Look how awesome that looks. Oh, it's got the, all the lines kind of, yeah, actually, the back, that, back looks cool. great. The, the back looks great. The front, not so much. But, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm using these discs to record to archive podcasts on them. Okay. On, on yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, the, the mono reel. Remember uh, that? Uh, yeah, mono. Yeah, it's got to be mono. What do you think of this bad boy? This is uh, from a uh, uh, dollar shop, Daiso. Oh, that looks cool. The back is, it's like, yeah, it looks all right. The back yeah. is kind of cool. Like a little bit of tile stuff there. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. in, in, in Japan, you can still buy brand new mini disc, right? Yeah, they're they're not cheap. Um, and they think I think the main ones that they sell brand new at something like Yorobashi would be the Bianca or the Neige. Um, and they're you know they used to go for less than a, about a buck per disc, uh -huh. but now you're looking, you're looking around five, almost five bucks per disc now. So they're not for cheap. Like, for like an eighty minute disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've I've been tempted. I've I've seen it many times on on, um, on eBay, and they're usually from Japan. Yeah, where you you can buy like a box lot of like two hundred and fifty um, discs. Yikes! Um, and they're all used, right? So you're gonna get yeah. some discs where there's there's already you know stuff Any on. Music. Yeah. yeah, and you you got to go through and, and wipe them. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I I haven't succumbed to the the urge yet, but but I might. You will, and yeah. uh, we'll wait. We'll be waiting for you there. I uh, I bought a couple of those lots, and uh, they're great. Actually, a friend of mine um, that I met in university, he sent me his old disc. He doesn't use them anymore. I uh, ev it looks like I evangelized the guy on non mini disc stuff back when I was kind of changing okay. over to, and so he abandoned it. I feel bad about that, but he sent me his old discs, and uh, they have. He hasn't used them in say let let's say fifteen years, and they have the smell of something that's been in a box for a while. Like you know how you get a piece of old clothes and sometimes it's it's got like yeah, a, like a musty kind of smell to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But going through his old recordings is quite funny. You could tell when he was really into mini disc, mm -hmm. and when he stopped being really into mini disc because some of them recorded optically titles everywhere, and then some yeah. of them it's like in a whole album, one track. Yeah, no titles, and uh, if you wrote anything, it's you can tell he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> it's like it's like disc, yeah, Diane, something like that. And it's like disc one, right? Disc, you know, like yeah, yeah. Uh, summer mix, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, summer mix. This, yeah. One. this, this is this is a, maybe might be a little blast from the past for you. I have like four or five of these. This is, um, oh. is that the it, ES one? Or? This, this no, is this isn't one, one of the original Sony. I've never seen one in real life. This is an original Sony sixty-minute disc from. It, this is the disc that probably came with that. That was it. The MZ one thing you got there. <laughs> so this, 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 yeah, this disc probably was was you know was for that player or that recorder rather. 
Right. The, well, six, the sixty minute and look, in memorial, of course, you wouldn't want to listen to anything else. But it's from, look, at, from, look at the way it's printed, though, right? It's, yeah. you, usually they're printed this way, but it's yeah. up, it's everything's upside down there, right? Yeah, look, you're right, right. It's the other way around. See that? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Wow. It's, it's the other way around. This is history, guys. Here, Isn't let's crazy? look at that. Here's one of the the modern ones. Uh -huh. This is the way you insert this way here, so the writing's right. But this the writing one, this this one is upside down. Upside down. You see the arrow? The arrow is pointing yeah. on the bottom. So that would, wow. So if I turn it if I turn it the other way around, everything is back to front. Amazing. Amazing. So, so what, what were they thinking? We were gonna use MD. Okay, everyone, hold your MD player upside down and insert like yeah. this. Like yeah. that. Okay, interesting. For a sixty well, minute sixty a sixty minute uh sixty minute this. Here's a high MD unit, by the way. Yeah, those those are quite expensive now, huh? They were not cheap back in the day. The cheapest they ever got was like seven bucks a disc. So, uh, and now they're going. Some people, some people sell them thirty to fifty bucks a pop. These are the worst. These are the these are the worst discs ever made. I had so many right. problems with these. So many problems with these things. The the Memorex eighties. I would never use anything called Memorex. Every time, every time I I use one of these discs, I I was basically rolling the dice. Yeah. You that know? it would uh, that it that would you would use recording okay. yeah not, it was it was yeah so i only have a handful of these because okay. the rest they threw out because it just didn't work you know that kind of reminds me of something so i was looking at i haven't seen the word memorex for quite a while but there was a, an advert back in the 90s I'm not sure if you remember this about 93 94 maybe 92 and it was uh they would do this on on radio stations so it'd be like can you tell the difference oh, yeah. on this on this fm stage on this fm studio recording when you're listening through your crappy speakers or, or horrible headphones over the FM radio, which yeah. one is a TDK recording of on a cassette tape or which one is the original CD? Yeah. And so yeah. they play them side by side over FM. And you're is, supposed to be is like, is it real or yeah. is it Memorex? <laughs> yeah. That was, that was their tagline, right? Is it real? Yeah. Or, or is it maybe? Yeah, that's right. Or is it Memorex? Right. That, that was their, their, their deal back in the day. And yeah. I, I remember they had in the ad, they had the, um, what the hell is his name? I can't think of his name. The lead singer from the Bauhaus, the, the band, the Bauhaus. He was in that chair with all his hair blowing back with the speaker in front of him. Remember, <laughs> remember that? The oh, old, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's okay. That's who that was. Memorex. Yeah. From I the, never even put that together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really famous, that's a, that, that yeah. was like one of the images of the nineties for me. At that least. was one of their main, yeah. Their main marketing uh, advertising deals from Memorex. Like, is it real or is it Memorex? Huh. Well, I, I don't know, dude, but they made shitty mini discs for sure. We we got um. By the way, we got someone who missed the first part of the stream here. They're asking you if you were having beer tonight. I'm very, who's that? Simon Pa, you you missed it, man. This is, I'm all I'm already done with the glass. I'm gonna have to crack open a new one in a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. He uh he already kind of basically. Oh, I still got something here. I got I got about the same amount in a can. Uh -huh. uh, don't don't show a can. Don't show that you're drinking beer out of a can. When Garrus on the stream, so okay. he'll decant okay. slowly, and it looks it looks so much more appetizing. Mm, yes, it's okay. Uh, one of my favorite beers. Uh, I don't have any tonight, but is the eight, the eight hundred five Firestone Brewing. Eight hundred five. I I don't know this one. I'm uh, sorry, man. It's phenomenal. Is that out of California? Where? Are... Yeah, it's California. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's one of the greatest beers ever. This week's edition of Photaco Fo Lounge brought to you by eight hundred five. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, we're open. We're open. I mean, if if you want to support, you want to support a a, a podcast. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh. Viewers, we're got gotcha. you. We're hook here. Up. We're here. Hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hook it up. So, do you make a lot of MDs purely through optical or drag and drop? We're using the 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 um the web. Mm. Okay, guys. All right, mics off, everyone. Mics off. All, All right. right. So, uh, I like to pretend that I do things or that I am, or that I have some sort of a traditional mindset. But once I discovered MD, WebMD, it's all drag and drop. Unless, like I said, unless I need a gapless cord. That's it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it is super convenient. You know, you literally just, you know, point it to the files, click a button, and then, you know, a minute or two later, it's on the disk. You, can, mm -hmm. you label it, and then you pop the disk, you're good to go. Um, and I, I use it quite often. But I have to say, that I'm maybe a little bit of a purist when it comes to recording um, CDs and, and the like, uh, and I still buy I still buy CDs. I still um, oh yeah, I have, 
Oh, you know what? I, I might have the John Carpenter thing right here. Hold on. Oh, we're gonna see it, guys. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I do. This this is the this is the album, John Carpenter, Lost Themes Three. Lost Themes Three. Okay. This this is his new one, and um, I've never listened to the CD. Only the MD guys. This Only guy, he calls himself MD. a purist. He's never heard the CD. Uh, awesome. And I got I, I got this, the David Bowie, I'm Afraid of Americans, the, the EP. Hmm. I've, I've never heard this on the, on the MP. And I'm, I'm a fan of Marilyn Manson, too. I don't know if you like Marilyn Manson, but this is his latest one, We Are Chaos. Really, really I, good record. I've heard uh, a couple of his songs before, but I'm... Hmm. I basically so, went. Yeah. Was it? So it's not. So this is just uh, it's another, another Manson album. But I, I, I what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I still buy CDs, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. still, physical, um, and I always make an, an MD of of the album. Yeah. But it's all done through optical, from from yeah. the the Blu-ray player optically into the deck, and then away you go. That's a good loop. To, it's a it's yeah. a good loop to be able to do that. Now the. Uh, I mean, if you have if you have a combination deck that's got the CD and the MD, that's the best yeah. way to do it, obviously. But uh, they're they're not that easy to find sometimes, and a lot of yeah. them are use uh, pretty bad parts too. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking of loop back, um, I do buy a lot of CDs. Uh, however, CDs in Japan were never cheap. You'd be spending like thirty bucks a CD, wow. and uh, back in the day, and even now. Um, uh, some special editions, and uh, you know, when you say special edition, some mm -hmm. people are like, well, of course it's going to be expensive. Well, special edition would be like a two CD would be like fifty bucks. Um, they're like a, like, a, like a two CD set, like they're expensive. And so, what I end up doing after having talked already about worried about <laughs> how do you beat the system, I end up ordering through Amazon. Yeah. 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 Me too. I, okay. I do the same thing. But but the, you know, all that stuff that we were talking about privacy is out the window once you go. Yeah, it's it's all good. For, forget about it. You know, it's like you're it's, it's just, you're done because the, you yeah. know, they're 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 archiving. They're 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 up to up to all kinds of uh, uh, shenanigans. Um, and we're publishing. This is on YouTube. Yeah. You, it's like um, you know. I mean, maybe maybe the Unabomber was right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, when he was ranting about yeah. the evils of technology and how it's going to take over our lives. What is it? The uh, um, industrial revo revolu revolution and its consequences. Yeah. Do I have that right? You know, the, the yeah the uh, so there's a lot of stuff. I mean, when you think when, when when did that happen? That was like the mid '90s when when he was sending a lot of stuff out there, man. bombs in the mail and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, to to anti technology. Um, <laughs> I I, th I think that. Uh, uh, or anyone who just came in, we're not exactly, we're not exactly endorsing the uniform. Right yeah. Hi, you, you've, uh, you're joining us in or, or this, to, uh, this is my last know, podcast. This is Unabomber Weekly. Thank you so much. Yeah, for you, joining you know, us. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you, I think the, 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 the lesson to be learned here is, um, to be aware yeah. of, of the harvesting of information. Yeah. Um, to 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 understand that it, it is happening, whereas I think yeah. most people are, are completely oblivious to it. They have no they have no clue. They have no idea, uh, and and they're just giving massive chunks of their life away. Right, right. right. Uh, and they have no clue. So to fight against it is 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 very difficult, if not impossible. But at least be aware. At least understand what's going on. You know. You know what I just realized right now? I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm. This conversation is like it almost feels like an introduction to a, a great podcast called Mindset <laughs> Central. <laughs> have you got, have you got that, that feeling? Has anyone else got that uh, feeling? Yeah, just go to mindsetcentral.com, folks. <laughs> they're all there. They're, they're all there. They're all there. They're all there. Uh, via Safari or Chrome, or you can, or you can listen via SoundCloud. Yeah, and I'm actually going to be starting uh, distributing my, the Mindset Podcast on Minidisc and mailing it to uh, to listeners. So um, <laughs> I'm joking. He's laughing. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, you know, but uh, be, be, before the internet, if I was really imagine if we, if I wanted to do this before the internet, yeah. that's yeah. That, that's probably what I'd be doing. You know, you'd have a zine, probably, probably a zine, uh, and putting audio tapes into envelopes and mailing it out to people. You know. Um, but yeah, I mean that's essentially what pop, what podcasting is, right? You yeah. Know? Well, basically, yeah. I mean, we got we got nine we got nine we had a peak at fifteen. We got nine people right now proving that this thing 
There you go. <laughs> it isn't, isn't much more expanded than the 90s for the zine. But oh, uh, hey, so I, got a, I got a question here. Um, uh-huh. Has anyone ever told you that you look a little bit like a, a famous podcaster when you sit behind that mic there? Who, me? Famous, yeah, Joe Rogan. Yeah, I do look a bit like him. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can you kick one of those punching bags against the wall like he does? Yeah. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan podcast all day, all night. Um, he just uh, just interviewed Robert Bigelow recently. Do you know who Robert Bigelow is? No idea. No idea. Are you into ufology at all? Follow who? Sorry. U- ufology, U- UFOs. Oh, uh, oh, you. I thought you said, "Do you follow G?" I'm like, "You follow G." G? You follow. Yo, 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 coming at you. Um, G, you know, G. I. Le- my experience with UFOs basically mm-hmm. uh, is from <laughs> Philip K. Dick. Uh huh. Whenever I meet somebody who's ever talked about them, and very slightly, very recently, listening to people talk about Egypt, so I don't, I know nothing about okay. UFOs. So bring it on. Um, so Robert Bill, Robert uh, uh, Bigelow is a billionaire real estate developer, right? Um, and he he I don't know if he still does, but he used to own tons of property in, in Las Vegas. Uh, and now he's he's waking uh, um, space habitats for the uh, uh, the International Space Station. Hmm. That's you know this guy is like you know he's got a, got a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the reason he was on Joe Rogan is because um, and he this and this is from his own words and I I mean I'm 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 uh, I'm paraphr- paraphrasing but but. He his parents had a close encounter when he was a little boy, and he had some very strange experiences when he was growing up. And he decided when he was a little kid to put a plan in place where he would spend the first thirty to forty years of his life building wealth. Hmm. And once he had enough money, he would then um, research. UFOs and the afterlife, huh? And, and the afterlife, and the afterlife, and and that's what he's been doing since the 1990s. You know, once hmm. once once he made his billions of dollars, yeah. he then kind of stepped back from business and started huh. investing in, uh, and he and he's literally spent hundreds of millions on research programs. To, to Robert dig, Bigelow, did you say? Yeah, Robert Bigelow to dig into this. Hmm. Um, and uh, this past week, he appeared on on the Joe Rogan podcast and. Uh, they talked for over three hours about all this stuff. It was fascinating. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Hello. Well, uh, that's it. I'll, I'll put that under John Carpenter to do a little bit of research here. <laughs> well, I, I listen, uh, you have both, like I, I, I read, listen, I, whether I don't know if Philip K. Dick would be considered a science fiction author or not, but I read a lot of his stuff and I like, um, mm-hmm. I like, he doesn't do a lot with UFOs, but he does a lot of sort of, metaphysical Simulation. encounters often with an enemy that you'll never see in the book or an or another entity and so uh do you, are you as you're a, a fan of, of of philip k dick yeah. do you do you recall the press press conference he gave in france in 1977 i've just read his books i've, <laughs> I've never oh. yeah okay so in 1977 he gave a, a press conference in 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 france uh um, yeah. And everyone went there thinking he was going to be talking about his latest novel. <laughs> and um, and you can look this up on the internet, the the, the on on YouTube, the the press conference is is available. And everyone's sitting there saying, "Okay, he's going to talk about you know his new book." And he starts going off, explaining that um, none of this is real. Oh, we're in a simulation. Yeah. Um, and, and start, and everyone, everyone in the audience is like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And, and when you think about it, this was 1977. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's 20 years before the matrix yeah. <laughs> and, and here he is, you know, pretty much talking about the matrix. The matrix. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. Uh, the more, you know, the first book I ever read, read by him was a uh, man in the high castle about the, like a hypothetical loss by the allies in world war two mm-hmm. where Germany and Japan would then expand their spheres of influence. And eventually the United States was broken. The US, yeah. Three parts, the German influence, the Japanese influence, mm-hmm. and this kind of the central zone and yeah, uh, neutral zone. 
Yeah, neutral zone. And like eventually, you, one of the main characters you, you find out is a is an actual like German agent. And at the moment you find that he is, there's this reality shift within the book itself where my my wife tried to read it, and up to that moment she was really enjoying the book. And after that, she's like, it just she she couldn't she couldn't go with him to the speed yeah. of like a single page or two pages turning where reality was just suddenly folded in on itself. And if you like Philip K. Dick does a lot of that with with a lot of his books. Some of them right. you find out there are some I guess you could say a modern person would be like at the trope. Well the trope started <laughs> the mm-hmm. trope some of those tropes started with Philip K. Dick like um but yeah just the reality folding in on itself and his mixing of that with metaphysics and then right. philosophy right. and uh, Gnostic religion and other things is I mean, I suppose if so, if you read a lot of Philip K. Dick, you're probably open to questions um, about, yeah, like. Well, he he, that. even though he wrote about those subjects, yeah, um, this also spilled into his real life, probably, uh, where he he strongly believed that uh, um, we were in a, in a simulation. Uh, there's one story, and I'm I'm, I'm probably going to screw this up royally, where. Um, are you familiar with the men in black? The, um, not the Will Smith, not the Will, Will Smith movie, but like the, 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 legit, the no, 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 forget, forget movies. But the, the, I, I, maybe I'm going to something, but he had, an, he, he had an encounter with the men in black where they, okay. they came, came to his house. Uh, and there was a, a woman dressed in black and she had like a special medallion that, that mm-hmm. somehow, um, uh, controlled him in a certain way. Uh, and his wife talked about this because she was in the house when they when they arrived. Uh, and, and I know this this sounds insane. I know it sounds ridiculous. I, I get it. Um, but I think with, with as far as Philip K. Dick is concerned, there, there, there's more than meets the eye here. There's there's more going on other than just you know he wrote some science fiction novels. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I don't know if that more than meets the eye is like um, what some people will say. That person that knows more than they, or that lets on, maybe subconsciously or consciously, more than they seem to know is part of it. Or yeah. if it's more like he's, you know, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's some pretty intense stuff. Um, the, the the press conference. I think you should check that out. It, it's yep. on. It's on Google. It's queued up. It's queued up. Oh, you got it. Okay, cool. Um, and also, there's a there's a new movie that uh, I don't know whether it's out yet. It it might be coming out. It's called A Glitch in the Matrix. I've and, heard about that. And it's analyzing simulation theory. It's a, it's a documentary about simulation theory. Uh, yeah. and, and they use that clip of Philip K. Dick in in the beginning of the movie where he announces that, um, you know. We're we're all in a computer simulation. The screen, the screen that the I was screen. talking about. The screen. quantum of consciousness. I'd actually like to know what you think about now that now that we're just kind of on this thing. For your homework, Gareth, mm-hmm. I would like to look up quantum of conscience. Quantum of conscience isn't That's that the new, new isn't that the new James Bond movie? No, I'm kidding. That was a joke. Oh, guys, guys, that was a all right, all right. Polish knee slapper. <laughs> you know uh, it does you know i when i first heard that the name of that channel that's what i thought it was, I was a quantum of wh- whatever that and that james bond movie was and i thought someone was telling me a joke and yeah uh-huh. quantum of conscience. conscience uh this is a, a book by matthew mckinley you know i that might be his surname but it's also uh it's a youtube channel he has uh he doesn't he doesn't stream every day he might stream every week but he has a uh, among the truther people on uh-huh. on uh, YouTube, I think he's one of the the yeah. kind of larger channels, which may itself indict him. I don't know. But, yeah. So here we go. I found it. Yeah. If you, I'd like to hear. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I'm I'm not familiar with this guy. So this look this looks interesting. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Tell me. He he does a lot of stuff about the screen. Um. And uh, to me, a lot of it makes sense. But uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of this stuff. I mean, I'm I'm into it all. I don't necessarily believe it all, yeah. but I'm still fascinated by it. You know, I mean, it's it's interesting ideas to 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 throw right. around your head. You know, to 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 um 
to think about like, well, what if this was real? I know that on, on mindset, when it, like yeah. my, my mantra for many years was, you know, uh, question your worldview, cha- challenge your beliefs, mm. right? You know, yeah. why do I believe that? Why do I think this is real? Question. Don't just accept it, you know, push, push, push your boundaries. Right. What the hell is going on here? You know, that kind of stuff. I think it's good. It's fun. No, I agree. And why don't we, uh, why don't we ask, uh, we got, listen, I, I have, I have a feeling that most of the people in the chat right now uh-huh. are your people, but they yeah. might have some questions. Sorry. If any, if any, y'all have some questions or we haven't looked at all those questions, why don't we uh, just Let's scroll, scroll, the scroll through and see what the, uh, uh, Punches Counter says, my dad bought a Betamax player when I was a kid and I fed it cheese and Hot Wheels. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I guess you, you know it's actually kind of funny. A lot of people that uh, talk about MD end up. Uh, I would say I would say normies at this point. Like oh, yeah. if you bring up the MD thing, and then people uh, from the outside world either learn about it or like, oh, MD that thing. Almost, almost uh, every single time there will be some sort of someone will bring up Betamax or or some yeah. other system. Yeah. There's connection there. I don't know about the cheese thing. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the hell he's talking about. He's he's out of his mind. Out of his mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think with MD too, you get a lot of um, you get the same kind of reaction when I you know when I start talking about UFOs and stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you know, they roll their eyes and shake their head and, and and wonder what's wrong with me. And it's the same. It's the same with MD. Like if 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 you're walking in the park and you sit down to change your disc and someone sees it and they're like. What the hell is that? What are you doing? You know, it's like, what? What is that thing? It's 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 so far out of their their reality. Yeah. It's bizarre. I remember um, in Canada, maybe two thousand three or so. I put in an MD in a Sharp MD MT seven seven, which is beautiful. One of the first uh, recorders that did MDLP. It lights up. It's actually kind of annoying. Actually, it lights up these these uh, beautiful LEDs whenever you play SP LP or LP two. Uh-huh. Or LP4, sorry. And uh, I was putting it in. I was putting it in and making a show of putting the disc in at the time because I was like, "Oh, I, you're like showing? Hey, look at this!" Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. Uh-huh. Because I, I had come back, come back to Canada, and I realized not a lot of people had them. And I saw some people across the way watching me put headphones on. I'm like, "Let me see the reaction." So I, I popped uh-huh. in the disc, not surreptitiously at all close the lid, hit play on the unit, not on the recorder. And they were like, oh, what was that, MD? And yeah, they actually could say it. And then a couple of a couple of months, not a <laughs> well, couple of months, I was like, what's that? Sorry. I was going to say, like, if you did that in the 90s or the yeah. early 2000s, it was yeah. like, a, oh, what is yeah, yeah. that? That's amazing. <laughs> but you do it now, and it's like, what's wrong with you? There, you know, there's definitely that, but there's a, there, don't forget, don't discount the, the the nostalgic factor. When I was back before yeah. the, the, the don't go on the trains, don't go out, whatever thing happened. Uh, I was on a train. It was about a year and a bit ago. And uh, on the train, I was just listening to, I, I was not trying to show off that I was using MD, but I popped in the disc and there was a couple of guys that looked at me like, at first they were surprised. And then I saw, yes, I did look up. I saw in their eyes, oh, like, I, I wonder where. I wonder if my unit's still working. They, you could see their brain just going. I wonder. Yeah, yeah. There is a strong nostalgic factor to yeah. it, also. You Absolutely. know, um, but it's. I mean, I find. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. That it's still, it's still very, very usable today. It's, oh, it's, yeah. not, it's not like a big in, encumbering, you know, like, oh, my God, I got it. It's it's still very usable, and it still sounds great, and it's still very portable. And, you know, I've, I've always wanted to get uh, an MD deck for my car. I, I never have. I've, I've never done it. But, I, but I've, I've always had that in, in the back of my mind to have, you know, the one, the in-dash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The in-dash yeah. deck. Um, Those are awesome. I've I've always wanted one of those, but I've never ever gotten around to um to doing it. But you you can still pick those up. I've seen them on eBay a bunch oh, of yeah. times. Yeah, they're not they're not so cheap anymore. MD went very cheap for a little while, but it's, it's not yeah. that way. By the way, there's a question just for you, and uh-huh. I don't know what it is. Are What's they good for picking up EVP, Gareth? 
Oh, oh, that's a that's a great idea. I you know I've never used MD for EVP. For EVP, I've al I've always used like a little recorder like this, um, to to record. But I've I've never tried it with MD to be honest with you. Uh -huh. What's EVP? I don't know what that is. Uh, electronic voice phenomena. All right, all right. Uh, 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 electronic. <laughs> Electro electronic and, and once again uh ladies and gentlemen one we're delving into the, the the insane part of the show this evening uh and, and i know that you know for the for the uninitiated this this sounds like the ramblings of a madman i get it but here's the thing um what i'm about to say 100 percent works and if you try it you mm. will get results this is not like well you know you're wasting your time it really really will happen um and this 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 is a, a common staple of paranormal research is where you you, you have your your recorder your digital recorder or uh, a tape deck whatever and you hit the record button and it's recording and you're in a supposedly haunted location and it's recording and you ask questions into thin air like oh. who who is here right now what's your name right and then when you stop it and you play back the recording, you get an answer. Now, I know that sounds insane, but I swear to you, if you yeah. try it, you will get a result. Now, when I now let me let me add like a little 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 asterisk to that. You might not get a result immediately. It might take hours, days, weeks, or even months. But eventually, if you stick with it, you will get a result, hundred percent. By sticking with it, you mean going back to the same spot and then re hit and record and letting it record for a while, or yeah, or, or in, you know, it does, doesn't have to be the same spot. But if if you keep doing the experiment, it doesn't have to be in the same location. It can be you know anywhere else. But if if you keep at recording, nothing, silence. <laughs> uh, sooner or later, you you'll you'll pick something up. Um, and if, if you if you do a search on on YouTube or on or, um, the internet for EVP or electronic voice phenomena, there's there's many many samples of these voices that people have picked up, and some of them are, are actually quite chilling. <laughs> I got chills once I found that it wasn't like environment. I was thinking it was like environmental noise or something. Okay, that there's some. I was thinking I was gonna say, no, my friend, you should pick up something like that has that has a much that longer. Would work. No, that I've would work. The, the, yeah, the, the no. task cam that you have there that that would do the trick. That would work. bring up voices, and now I'm like, that would work. That would <laughs> totally work. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it it totally works. You could absolutely try it, and and you you will eventually you will get results. I mean, you might might get lucky and get results immediately, uh, but eventually you you, you will get results. Um, I would advise people though, if if you want to experiment with this, you might not want to try it at home. Um, because if if you did it in your house and you got responses, your house might not be that much comfortable place to live in. Mm. Mm. So I, I would try it, you know, away from the house, someplace else. <laughs> Someone else, go to a friend's house, yes. go to a friend's house, uh -huh. and do the EVP experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I uh, in answer to the question, I have not tried EVP with with mini disc. But if you but, were to do but it, though, it, but it should work. It should it should work. But I, I haven't tried it. If you were to do it, would you do it mono or stereo? <laughs> I, I would do it on uh, um, uh, LP2. LP2. Uh, <laughs> LP2, long play two, you get yeah. 100 and, 160 up to 160 minutes. Yeah, no, but it, it should work on MD, but I've, I've never tried it. But, um, but yeah, uh, e EVP. We, by the way, I think someone just did the EVP right now, and he, got, he put out this answer. It says Peter Murphy. There you go, Peter Murphy. Yeah, he was... Um, uh, if, is it real or is it Memorex? He was the guy in the chair. He, he's the guy from uh, Bauhaus. Oh, I thought he just tried the EVP thing, and he's like, "Are you there?" Yeah, What's Peter, Peter okay. Murphy. I think okay. that was the name. All right. Uh, let's see. Crazy John. He looks like he says he has an MD. He had an MD in his in his car, an MD car radio. Good on you, Crazy John. Yeah, You're one of yeah. the few. I've always wanted one of those, but I, I, I don't. I don't have one. Well, I hope that next time there I'll be able to hear something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have one. I'm going to be working on that, and that's my. I, by the way, I have a car that I found recently that actually has a clock. Didn't have a. Didn't know I had a clock. 
It's a clock that I inserted in, inserted inserted later on. It's I've uh-huh. got a CD player there, and mm-hmm. that's the. It's a basic car, obviously. It it, it doesn't even go into reverse sometimes, <laughs> like uh, and the the back it has a split back bench, so that's the one upgrade. And and then it's got um, you pull this thing and the windows go up, automatic okay. window. But the uh, the basic one has a an integrated bench in the back, and it. It's this, by the way, before I bought this car, I knew this. lots of people had these cars. Just to swing back here just for a second. Um, that's because most of Japan uses this car to deliver mail. Okay. So you see it on the road all mm-hmm. the time. Of course, after I bought the car, I'm seeing way more, many of it. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a great car. Uh, it's called a Suzuki Every. It's a K car, which means its engine is smaller than 680 cubic cubic mm-hmm. centimeter um whatever that is in inches or whatever and uh so y- going up a hill is tough uh gear one uh-huh you only use it if you have another person in the car and you will need it if you have another person in the car it's a small engine how is, um, but- how's the how's the electric car situation in, in japan is it getting popular out there for le- electric cars and the like you know i see every once in a while the nissan leaf yeah, and, uh, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll see um, what is it called, the Tesla. Okay. But apart from that, you know, I, I maybe I don't know enough about cars to be like, oh, that's an electric car. But the two models that I know, or the two brands that I know, yeah, um, yeah. Leaf, I Leaf don't see really well. Yeah. Yeah. What about down in the states? Yeah, they're they're springing up all over the place. Oh. The Nissan Leaf, there's, there's the Chevy, uh, yeah. the Chev- Chevy Volt. Volt, yeah. Um, so uh, Tesla, of course, Tesla's everywhere. Um, so they are becoming more and more uh, popular, right? Yeah, big time, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we'll we'll see it here. Like when we put up our house six six years ago, they they asked us if we wanted to put in like an electronic, like the the oh, like a charger, gas, yeah, the charger. gas thing mm-hmm. for the electric car, yeah. and we're like, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to have one. We're like, we'll do it for free. And I'm like, okay, so we have one outside. Oh, cool. I got to make sure not to plug other stuff into so yeah well they the in california they've mandated that by by 2030 um there'll be no uh gas powered cars for sale no it's going 100 percent electric no, 2030. no 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 new cars no so come 2030 yeah. and you, you're in the market to buy a new car yeah. Yeah. your only your only option will be a, an electric car I have so many. I have so many opinions about this sort of thing. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's good or bad, but like, um, if you live in a warm place like California, and people do people eat in California, they eat like a lot of junk food. Yeah, yeah. So they're uh, diesel cars. You can very easily convert into biodiesel cars. Oh yeah, yeah. With the uh, the grease, right? The yeah, just the grease. The you just fat, filter yeah. the grease, and you have the right sort of some sort of converter mm-hmm. in the fuel tank or post the fuel tank, and you can just run it off of grease and one thing that kind of bothers me about the whole electric, electric car thing is that we've had, if you're going to have, and everyone wants a growing economy, right? They want their growing economy and they want to protect certain sectors to make sure that there's always a certain amount of income that comes into that and whatever. Yeah. Why, why is it that at least in Canada, which you can't really use that anyway, cause it gets cold. Why have they outlawed using such things for so long? Um, so yeah. if they're really worried about environment, why can't you just recycle your waste mm-hmm. and use your car? And no, you, you make, you make a very good point. I have, I have no idea why they would, uh, not allow that. I mean, it's viable. It works as people that, that, uh, uh, they, they, they modify their cars themselves yeah. right, right. This, and, it, and yeah. it works, works fine. So in, in uh, the States then it's, it's yeah. legal to yeah. They, oh, that's, yeah, they that's modify cool. it. Nice. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know why why it wouldn't be why they wouldn't want to pursue that. I don't know. Evidently, it smells like French fries. The, it does, the yeah. yeah, yeah. You get, hungry, right? you get hungry while you're driving. <laughs> Which <laughs> and there it is. You're hungry for French fries while you're driving. Exactly. You got a craving. Where do you go? To the place that's going to feed you the waste to so turn you, into your fuel. Yeah, you could go get get a burger and fries and fill up your tank. At the same time, fill up your personal tank and fill yeah. up your car's personal oh. tank. Boom! There you go. And you're getting rid of waste. Exactly. That's a great idea. See? So yeah, I don't know, but uh, yeah, you make a good point. It's it's, it's uh, interesting why why they don't pursue that. Um, but yeah, it looks like all cars are going to go electric. 
Um, so I, I don't know how that, I mean, there's, there's privacy concerns with that, right? You know, when, um, when you're filling up your car with electric, uh, especially with the Teslas, and I'm assuming it's the same with everything else. When you, when you, when you go into a Tesla station, you, you plug in to the, hmm. to fill up, you know, you're not only juicing up the batteries of your car, but, but the, 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 it's also taking all the information from like where you've been, How's how many miles have you driven? How many? All that stuff is being shipped back to, through through the through the cable that's juicing your car. Back. Never to, thought about that. To, it's all being recorded, uh, you know. And and by the same token, because these are electric cars and there's a computer on board that communicates regularly back to home base, um, if they didn't want you to travel to a certain area, they can. Hmm program the car to stop functioning when you reach a certain point. Now, I'm not uh, saying that that's, that's going uh, to happen, but it's completely oh, it, possible. I think it's going to happen. I might yeah. go one further there. I think it's going to happen. I think if it's possible and there's a reason why it might be viable, it's going to, I think personally that's going to happen. That's where I, that's, I, I, I don't know on the, like a scale of like conspiracy person. I don't know where I am. I think my friend who's in the chat, the Canadian, he's kind of a little bit more, he's a little bit more like, the guy you find on the street and i'm i'm I, no, I'm, I'm not like i'm not really uh-huh. i'm photoku no matter where i go i'm never fully into anything i'm i'm the guy yeah. in the middle of the normie okay. and the guy that's in there so i don't know on this scale where i would go but on this point i would say uh i mean even minority report you just mm-hmm. watch the, the movie not the yeah. book but uh or not the novella and then the couple of stories it's based on right. even there you see they're trying to shut down the car and they can because that was that was an electric car that well it's it's this it's the same thing with 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 drones now right when you if you were to go and purchase a drone the drone is already pre-programmed by a gps that there are certain areas that, that it cannot fly yeah you know if you if you were to go to an airport with your drone and say you know what i want to fly my drone over and get real close-ups of the planes taking off well, good luck with that because the drone won't, won't even take off because it, it knows where it is and it won't yeah. allow you, it, w- it won't allow you to fly in that area. Yeah. Uh, and with, ele- with electric cars, something very similar could happen. Yeah. Will happen. Probably will happen. happen. <laughs> will happen. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, um, if you want to be truly autonomous, uh, buy, buy a pickup truck from the late nineties. Yeah. You know, um, with with minimal computers in in the car. Um, uh, otherwise, who knows? I remember in the '90s there was the computers people were talking about it was the governor, and if you could tweak the governor to get like a little bit more power or a little bit less power or something like that. And this was in Canada. It might be, I'm I sure if it's in Canada, it's got to be existing in California because sure. yeah, yeah. like, um, and. That was all I knew about computers and cars, but it seemed to be everywhere now. I think my wife's car, I think the wheels, it's called the VW Up. They don't sell it in the, in North America, but it's smaller than the Polo. Yeah. And you can feel it. It's got computer-controlled steering. What, not fly-by-wire, but it's in between fly-by-wire and uh, and actual, like, mechanically controlled. So uh-huh. it's, it's, it's interesting, yeah. That scares me. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think... But, uh, um, as, as we're moving forward, yeah. I think the future as far as technology is, is exciting, you know, it's, 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 but it's also terrifying. Uh, if, if you just kind of think forward 50, yeah. 50 years from now or a hundred years from now, the world would be almost unrecognizable. Well, I would reckon, I would reckon that it, it's not really recognized, probably not that recognizable from the say. I'll say 70 years ago, 100 years ago. <laughs> like, I mean, even, I don't want to get into this topic, but like when I moved to Canada in the 90s, I was amazed at the sort of person that lived there. And when I went back in 2011, I was like, where are those people anymore? This is 20 years. And uh, what, what, so, what kind? What kinds of people? What do you mean? Uh, what I mean was uh, I, I moved in just north of um, Toronto and we lived in a city called Woodbridge and it was all second generation and first generation Italian immigrants. Mm-hmm. And we went back and there's no Italians there anymore. They all no, away. They're all gone. And uh, there are a lot of Filipinos and Vietnam- Vietnamese there, um, uh-huh. but like it's totally different. Um, so like when, yeah, from when we moved to Canada and we moved to, now I'm not, now I'm here. It's uh, 
that's just 20 years. It's it's totally different. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine from 100 years ago <laughs> and like 100 years hence what it'll be like. And I, I, I can imagine that I can't imagine. Yeah, it's 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 going to be very 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 different. Um, not I mean technologically, of course, it's going to be it's it's hard to even imagine what. Uh, but but culturally also, cult, culture is going to radically change. Um, you know the Don't way. Trying, no, no it, it is. It's going to radically change. I mean, look at look at it now. The, yeah. I mean the 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 children being born today. They, they they can't even begin to visualize a world without the internet, without yeah. a smartphone. Yeah. They they can't comprehend it at all. It, you know, it's it's madness. Yeah. So how, how's how's that going to play out? You know, thirty, fifty, a hundred years from now. Well, here's a we went back to the 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 starting a fire in my grass story. Uh -huh. Like I'm half joking that when my friend came over, he's like, "Hey, let's start fire the traditional way." Mm -hmm. I was saying, "Oh, he's going to bring matches." Right. I didn't honestly think that, but at the same time, that that is that is really connected. I thought none of us. I don't. I, there are very few of us. Probably, you're probably looking at one in some thousands of people that can actually start a fire the way that they're. Oh yeah, man! Like yeah. if you if you took me and dropped me in the middle of a, of a forest somewhere, yeah. I'd be screwed. Yeah. I I I'd, I'd be in three days. I'd be dead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I wouldn't know how to do anything. Have you seen the movie The Gods Must Be Crazy? I many many years ago, a long time ago. Yeah, it's from 1980. So yeah. it's it's my favorite film of all time. And uh, the main reason, and it was my favorite film back when I was like 12. It's my favorite film. I'm 42. Uh -huh. so it's been my favorite film for 30 30 years, and I've watched it over 40 times. And one of the things I didn't realize, I didn't understand what it was that I liked about it as a kid. I thought it was funny. Um, I thought the I thought the story was cute, etc. But looking back and then looking through my life, I've realized that that the movie and it's very obviously setting it up. There's a dichotomy between the modern life and the pre-modern life, mm -hmm. as well as the modern man, the pre-modern man. And one was of complication, and one was of you could say primordial understanding of the world. And the Bushman, he like for instance, a lot of people um, like Doomer people around the circles that I am. I don't. I don't know what the doomer. We all have different words for doomers. Yeah. Um, what, what, my, what, is, what is a doomer? Ah, uh, doomer in in yeah. in my in my circles. I'm I tend to be on the right wing of the spectrum in a more primordial sense. So, mm -hmm. like, I, for instance, I don't even believe that democracy is a good thing. Okay. So I don't want to get into that. But uh, so the doomer would be like things are all going to to shit, and there's nothing we can do, and every there's that's it. There, the the world that we thought we loved is going to be so far gone that the people in the future won't even have an anchor in any any. It's just it's just black hole. Um, but the a lot of some of those people also mix with a prepper sort who wants to make sure they got all these supplies, etc. Right, right, right. In, in case that something happens, and there there's they can be mixed from all over the sort of political spectrum, sure, uh, sure. religious spectrum, etc. And that doesn't matter. But w when you watch that movie, the Bushman could take mm -hmm. water from a gourd in the ground by shaving it. He had food, water, everything he needed by just being in his environment. And we have people um, that I think have the right mindset, if I may use that word, mindset, <laughs> who, who, in the event of a big problem destroying the world they think they understand or the world they've been attached to that may not have existed in the past, what they do is they collect more of the world to keep themselves alive rather than the skills. I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. Transcend anything happening, essentially. Yeah. I mean, apart from some sort of like nuclear winter right. or whatever, you, you can't, you can't uh, be a natural uh, yeah. man. Right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, so, I, I, I agree. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by what you said about you don't believe democracy in democracy. <laughs> no, it's not, that's not for this for this for this podcast i don't want to go there uh, okay, fair enough fair enough yeah, but i would very if you if you ever had a couple of minutes like okay i say a couple of minutes there's been two hours at this moment if you ever had some time in the future and i would like to 
try to interest you in having time in the future, I, I would be very happy to discuss something like that. Either yeah. on your podcast, which is probably, mm -hmm. that might be more, I don't know if that's more topical, or here. I do have sure. a number of people who, the, a very few number of people who follow in that same vein. Most people are here for, for mini disc and other stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, but yeah, it's 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 uh, those kind of discussions are, um, I find very very interesting. So so yes, <laughs> I, I I know you don't want to talk about it now, but but let's let's uh, maybe maybe sometime in the future we can revisit this. Yes, it's just a it's a big topic. That's why yeah. it's not uh, not because I'm I, I have a lot to say about it. My 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 Canadian friend in the uh, in the chat, he's like, oh man. Don't get him started right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't break. Don't get. Don't go there. Don't yeah. go there. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go there. Yeah. Um. I noticed you had the the Tascam recorder. The yeah uh, yeah yeah. Uh. I was thinking about purchasing one of those. I I was, I was on the fence between getting one of those and the uh, the Sony PCM one hundred. Okay. Uh. And uh, I was gravitating towards the Sony. Uh, hmm. Because every every review that I read about it was like, was well, that your comment in one of my videos about I think, that? I think I might have, yeah. Okay, so sure. I haven't I haven't addressed that yet. Let me address this for you right now. Sure, sure. The Sony does um, now. I have not. I have, by the way, I did borrow the one hundred. Yeah. Okay, so and I actually did test its output as well as its input for recording quality. Yeah. It is higher, however. Yeah. I don't believe that you're going to see the difference between the two in the actual recording. This does have also a very low noise floor for the, the mic input, uh, the microphone inputs as well. Yeah. The Sony does have, you can change the direction of the mics, which is a right. bit better. They seem to reject wind noise slightly better. Mm -hmm. However, you cannot use XLRs with it. Yeah, there's no, there's no XLR. The, the, uh, every, every review that I read about it was the, on, the only negative was no XLR. The interface is also a little bit more fiddly. Um, if you look at the... You having you using MD for all these years probably yeah. will have noticed that Sony newer Sony MD players got harder to press on the unit yeah. themselves, yeah. and even the remotes were less um, they sucked in, in initially intelligible. The Tascam doesn't it it's still kind of scattered here and there, but I found that overall the way you use the interface here. Uh -huh. um, so that's menu, the, that's the Mark Three, right? This is the Mark Three, yes. The Mark Three. So I I used to have the Mark Two. Okay. Of that. Of that that okay. one um and what i didn't like about it was that um there's a lot of handling noise so if you're recording when you were holding it um you'd get you'd get a lot of the you know as you're and moving and stuff and uh, the internal mics or uh when you're plugging in a microphone the internal, and i i sold it and i i sold it and i bought i bought the um yeah I bought the Zoom, um, the Zoom Pro, okay, and, okay, right, right? right now this this has like uh, no um, handling noise. Like right, I, right. I I can go like this, and, right. and and it's it's extremely minimal. Okay, um, and that that's what I liked about this. But but I've had this for a while now, so I, I am in the market for something a little better. But but I it's got to have the handling noise is it's a deal breaker for me. You know what I'll do uh, tomorrow? Next homework here. Just a second. Let's let me just type this here. We'll do a small video just for you. Uh huh. Handling noise, and I'll all it, it'll just be a small video showing the handling noise from each of the um, each of the inputs, touching the wires, touching the unit, yeah, uh, breathing around it. Just show you all of it. Okay. If that, if that would be helpful, I'll put that up uh, maybe that'd Wednesday. Great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be really cool. For Tascam. And then um, I don't have the Sony with me to compare it directly with. Um, and you know what? At the time, I didn't spend a lot of time, like, I want to use the word, like, I, t t t touching it whilst I was recording. So I, that's, that wasn't on my mind at the time. That wasn't my yeah. mindset at your the time. Of recording it, so, yeah. It might have been centrally your mind. <laughs> it's uh, now central in my mindset to the handling noise mind, of all yeah, these things. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, the, that was that was what the 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 Sony the the, the was it the PC, is it PCM one hundred I think I think it's yep. called. Yep. Um, I was I I, al I almost clicked the buy button <laughs> many many times. Yeah, yeah. 
and and I kind of pulled my hand. No, no, don't do it. Wait, wait. There's uh, some haptic problems with that unit too. Just uh, for like input, um, the the Tascam, you can basically disable the microphone uh, preamp gain here. Uh, um, it, it's just endlessly rotating, so it's basically fly by wire. With the Sony, it's hardwired, as as far as I remember. And so what happens is, you can bump. Now they have ways to 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 make sure you don't bump it as easily, but yeah. you can bump the the inputs a little bit. So um, also the the price on the Sony was a little Sony, bit, yeah, it's a grand, yeah. roughly, isn't it? Considering it's it's like a what a six or seven year old uh, yeah. piece of hardware. Um, to buy one brand or even buying it used is ri ridiculous. Yeah, it should should you know, it should be like you know two three hundred bucks by now, but it's not. It's still like seven eight eight nine hundred dollars for the unit. Um, so I that that was also a major component of me not hitting the buy button. Although I did come close on several occasions. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, but I didn't I didn't buy it. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, listen, I'll I'll publish that. You tell me what you think. If that helps you, I do. I mean, I gotta, I, I, Nathan, I, I have to up my EVP game. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Yeah. Listen, I don't know much about the EVP thing. I'm not sure I want to try it. Um, but that may be a long-term project for the Tascam uh -huh. and maybe a mini disc on the side. By the way, we got some dude here. Mm -hmm. Mimi Pelayo Mimi. Oh, yeah. Bill okay, Dick. Yes, now tilt Blade Runner Minority Report total. Yeah. What's what do you reckon tilt's about? Tilt, I don't know. I'm not sure what that means, but yeah, Blade Runner Minority Report total recall. Get to the chopper. Get to Mars. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, let's do this. Have how many Philip K. Dick stuff says have you read before? Um, I started to I'll, I'll be honest with you. I started to read uh, a scanner darkly. And it's, I remember the book started off really well mm. and then became unreadable. Well, it was, it, it almost mirrored what was going on in that guy's head, the main character. Yeah. When they had all the, like the little aphids all over the guy and everything, yeah. and, and was, it was, it was a, it was a challenge to, to get through it. Okay. Um, and I, and I, I, to be honest, I bailed because okay. it was real hard going. Okay. Was Recom that your Recom dick? recommend something good and easy to read, please, and I'll 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 give it a shot. Easiest one for um, <laughs> the easiest. Here's me as a a fake anything. The easiest one for the normie to get into definitely is Man in High Castle. I think because um, okay. you can go. Philip K. Dick will take you places. Listen, I don't know if he'll take you places or anyone else places, but he took me. Pl like some of his books are just. Uh, you have to, I've yeah. I've seen things. You people wouldn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could finish the rest of that line. Um, I, I do like the movie Blade Runner quite a bit. I actually prefer the book, and I don't want. I don't want to get off on a Philip K. Dick tangent because um, we're going for two hours. But uh, what I like about the book is it really blends. I'll, he brings a lot of times psychological theories, but in Blade Runner he brings religion. That seems to, as you can tell, from that world, along with everything else, being destroyed. Religion is gone. Animals are gone. The only thing that's left is humans and some sort of economic interaction model. Well, he brings back religion, sense of community, and an internet, not of things, but an internet of sorts that goes through this sort of religious thing. And... It, it it's not meant it's it doesn't come out through the book and I'm or the movie I'm not sure how it could easily come out through the book the, sorry the movie um and it's it's a sort of idea that what he it, he brings a cynical like a cynical money element to it or cynical pacification element to it and then brings a, a medical a metaphysical reality that basically supersedes that that then becomes the reality that, it's a good book. Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep is is a right. good book, um, and is also one of the easier ones to read. But you do have to, you will have to deal with some sort of interesting, newtopia stuff in a religious format. Um, but that that's another one. That's it's it's one right. of my favorites for sure. Right. All right, that, that's going to be on my to do list then. Is to check out uh, Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Yeah. Um, I uh, 
because of your font, I'm assuming you're a huge fan of the movie. I do. Okay, I'm not a huge fan. I love it a lot. I love it a lot. I'm not a huge fan. I love it a lot. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Uh-huh. Uh, I've only seen it around eight times. So okay. now this also might indict the the little the, maybe the brain that's in there. But God sounds too crazy. I've seen over forty times. Yeah, Blade Runner around eight nine times. I do like it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I go back and forth on which scene I prefer from the movie or the book. Um, but yeah, I do consider it one of my, one of my, my favorite sort of science fiction. Movies. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I love it also. I think it's a great movie. What did you think of, uh, the 2049, the sequel? Okay. So I've seen that one twice. I do want to see it again. The thing is, um, we have a single television in our house and, uh, if the television's on and we live in a Japanese house, so if it's on the entire house, hears it. And mm-hmm. I don't have it. So if I want to watch it by myself, what I got to do is I got to get up purposely late at night after everyone's asleep and watch it on my laptop. Can and you that's just, not normal. Can you put headphones on or something? Or I don't. I would have to sit real close to the TV. I don't have an extension cable oh. to it. Um, I probably should do that. I I really would like to to watch it quite a bit more. I you know I didn't. I, I follow some of those people. I don't really like uh, the Jared Leto character so much. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with um, trying to look back. I was a little bit disappointed how they treated Rachel uh, and how it, it was kind of like the, what, what's that? What's that other movie? I like, I like the new one, I'm, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to explain. Do you still, you see what, you mean, what they did with her face to make her, make the actress look yeah, like the, uh, Sean Young, not well. Yeah, I mean, sure, all of that. I mean, the the whole sort of model molding this character that we, in our own way, forty years after the fact or thirty years after the fact, have kind of come to revere in almost a religious way, and as one of the great sort of balanced characters in a science fiction movie. Um, I I didn't like how they kind of did the. What was that move? That new Star Wars movie, Rise of the Skywalker, or whatever, where it's like I was all the Sith, and then yeah, and cool. then it was that guy that that was supposed to be the big bad guy that was in a jar, and it's like Snoke. I made him, and it was just pulling, pulling Snoke. Yes, 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 Snoke. So like pulling all of, uh, and also like Harry Potter, everything bad comes from us, like. It's not, it's not like a a dark gray. It's not like this gray world where where there's a lot of bad characters it's everything bad pulls to a single character and it's it's, i and it it goes through you know the tyrell corporation then it goes through this guy that bought it out and and then he ends up i i didn't like that part but maybe i need to watch it again and just and just you know look at it what what do you think about it i i um i was really surprised by it because um i could i i didn't think that it was possible to make a sequel to Blade Runner. And Mm. not only did I not think it was possible to make a sequel, but I thought that whoever made the sequel, it would be just horrific. It would be horrible. You know, it would just just be absolute um, garbage. Right, right. And it wasn't. I I actually really really enjoyed it. And I I mean, I I don't know, maybe maybe it was because I went into it with such low expectations that it, it was actually really good. Um, but no, I, I really enjoyed it. I liked, I liked it. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, I'm just, just looking through, through some MDs here. Cause I wanted to show you this. I'll pull out if you can, I don't know if you can read that. This is Blade the- Runner EMS recombination definite edition. Definitive edition. Definite or oh, definitive. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Definitive. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Okay. Yeah. It's, nice. Uh, it's the, um, the soundtrack, but not yeah. not like uh, it's like hmm. the legit real soundtrack in the order of the movie. Okay, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, huh. it's, it's great. Did so, you pull that? Did you get that from a CD as well, or? Uh... Uh, no, I, I I got this from um, uh, someplace on the on the internet. I can't, okay, can't can't tell you where. Some place. I don't think it was Bandcamp, folks. Don't no, think it was Bandcamp. But it's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, homework homework not. Just Bandcamp, Bandcamp, hoping. Just do a do a search on a certain um you know torrent e place. No so, idea what that means. Or Blade Runner EMS recombination. 
and you'll find it. And the audio quality is superb. Superb. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to end. Uh, I want to end the MD con conversation just right here. MD can sound very good. It is compressed, so you're not going to get. It's not going to be WAV quality. It's not going to be ALAC quality. However, I can't tell the difference to be honest. At my with my ears. Um, uh, it's to do with it's like what's that old thing? You know, garbage in, garbage out. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. So if you're putting in a very high high quality source, right, you're going to get a great recording. It's as simple. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's going to sound great. Absolutely. You they know? do a good job of masking. Um, some people, like uh, I used to be part of this uh, forum called Hydrogen Audio, and they do like a lot of uh, ABX testing back and forth between different formats. And according to that one, uh, A-Track didn't do that well. But I mean, they're also, you can be hyper artistic and try to discover every problem with a thing, or you can enjoy it more holistically. And I've back to back with M uh, CD, the only thing I've ever noticed in the difference is if you're listening to a CD of a certain on a CD player of a certain vintage and then an MD of a certain vintage, they're, depending on the brand, Sony did have some MDs that had baked in bass boost. Mm -hmm. And it could be, they, they could not be defeated. You could either go higher, <laughs> you could never go flat. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, it's because the headphones at the time were really poor. And it's true. Um, so you're gonna, you will hear differences, but it won't be the MD itself. It'll be the hardware that's playing back on it. Um, but yeah, MDs sound great. Yeah. It's interesting though with the uh, the A track, you know the 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 compression that they use on on mini discs. Right. I think the latest they got what's a type type R. Yeah. Was was like the that was the end of the line for mini discs. Like, so if you right, have right. you have a recorder that records in type R, you're pretty much at the the pinnacle. Right. Um. But I read somewhere that um they're on like uh, eight A track nine or A track ten now, with the the Sony PlayStation. Um, all of the audio for the PlayStation it's encoded in A track and it's like it's nine or ten. So that's so, possible. Yeah. So, so they're still developing this thing. Yeah. Just not with MD. Well, that's interesting. You heard it here. You know. All the, all, if you guys are all like not, you're not faux talk about it. You knew it already. You you MD MD heads. <laughs> but, but you know, if uh, I mean, if if Sony were were to make a, a new, and I know this will never happen, but if they were to make a new. Um, MD recorder slash player yeah. would probably incorporate the A track nine or ten or whatever whatever it's up to right now, and its buttons would be so small, <laughs> yes. <they> needle. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would it would come with a stylus to, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to hit the well, then, like this one. I mean, look at all the controls there. The, by the way, yeah. for comparison, I'm not a I'm a 184 centimeters. I'm, I'm average height in the Netherlands. I'm not a big guy, but uh, that's just my thumb. Okay, and all those controls for plus, minus volume, track forward, track reverse, play, pause, exactly. plus, menu, group, and T-mark are all here. But that 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 joystick there, that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six controls at once, and it's very easy to accidentally hit something else. And uh, yeah, why they stop crazy. and pause over here? I know. What's, what, when they were designing that, though? They were probably like having having you know in meetings thinking, oh, this is look look how amazing this is. Everything looks gonna be so it's gonna be incredible. You they know? shouldn't have meetings. They should just have. I think I think they should. All good designs, I think, harken back to a single good designer who's like, nope. Yep, that's yeah. personally how I think, and yeah. I think or this one was person, the yay or nay. That's it. This is a committee. This is a committee design. Now that uh, that model. Um, it's it's very sturdy, right? It's it's well. It's built. quite sturdy, yeah. It's not the most sturdy. This is a. It uses a magnesium shell, which they're a little bit less. Okay, so aluminium is a little bit more brittle. The aluminium alloy, um, mm -hmm. but this one overall on the hinges here. I'm just gonna press hard. Yeah. Right sides. Right. There's no move. Right yeah. here in the middle. There's a tiny bit, but this mm -hmm. thing is. It's a solid. It's, it's solid, yeah. And even in the middle, the amount of flex is. There is flex, mm -hmm. but. All of these units will have flex. The only ones that don't really have flex. Oh yeah. That, but I mean, <laughs> there's a tiny bit of flex right in the bottom, but that's because there's a bit of a hollow area. But like this thing doesn't really flex. But this thing is also you're yeah. not going to get in your pocket. So why did you buy that? As you, like because you're a collector and a completist, or or, or just why, why why did you you seek that one out? Because that's a model that I would never consider buying. Okay. Uh, that I am none of those things and I want to be all those things, but I never will be. So 
uh, I am like again, I am a fotaku. So I like it because it looks it looks cool. It's also the first one, and it's the first one I knew about. And back when I couldn't afford it, I didn't have it. And now they're cheap because a lot of them are in disrepair, and they do they have very powerful amps, but they don't sound nearly as good. There's a lot of hiss. You hear a lot of the electronic noise that's going on inside the unit. Um, but they're really cool, and uh, it was uh, a working unit for around sixty bucks. Um, I mean, it has all the output. Me, it's, it's, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know that you know throughout throughout the nineties and into like the mid two thousands, Mini Disc was extremely popular yep. in Japan. Yep. Uh, so Mini Disc was was huge in Japan. It was big in Europe, and it was like nothing in the U.S. Yep. Right, right, right. Nothing. Yeah, it was very niche in Canada as well. Yeah. And, um, so it's it's like um the stuff that's available in japan there's there's a lot of really cool units that i've seen yep. online that which i've I've never seen in the flesh i've only seen like photographs and stuff yep. uh like like the the boom boxes and the little stereos right. and all that really right. cool neat stuff um and uh i go on ebay and i look up this stuff and it's it's like ridiculous prices right and that surprised me when you said you bought that in working condition for sixty dollars. Because yep. over here, if I was to look that up on eBay right now, and look for one in good condition that's working, it's I'd, not a not perfect, but it's it you know cosmetically it's it's quite nice and good condition, um, not not yeah, pristine, yeah. like yeah. In, in decent condition. I'd I'd be paying a couple of hundred bucks. Yeah, easy. easy. Oh yeah, it's um. Uh, it's also a unit, by the way, um, you can do a few upgrades if you have. And I do have a couple of friends who do hardware upgrades. I had a couple. Um, do you know the the um, MD, not MD, <laughs> MD, MP3 maker company, like player company called Austell and Kern? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. It, they're basically a product of iRiver. It's basically their high-end mm -hmm. brand, portable audio. And Austell and Kern brought out this player called the ak100 i believe it was in 2011 and it was the first compact high-end portable player not an md obviously um and it I, what was the price i don't know four five hundred bucks it was at the time it was insane there are now players that go some thousands of dollars it's it's insane actually i have one here i've got a three thousand dollar player on my desk here it's three thousand bucks um oh yeah, it's, yeah the mp3 from, yeah. Remember what it's called uh, from cayenne i'm actually Used it for photo shoots. Supposed to go back. Hasn't done it yet. I need to do that. How uh, does it sound though? Oh, it's it's good. Amazing. <laughs> but I, no, it sounds it sounds good. But I mean, it's like oh, the, the diminishing returns. I mean, for three grand, it should sound like they're 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 standing next to you. Well, it's it's like it's like everything. Um, I, I think that the threshold when when you get beyond this threshold, which is low noise, so you don't have a lot of hiss through even sensitive earphones, and you have then then it depends on the stereo so if you're the type of person that loves the stereo to be as separate as possible then your choice is really diminished but if you like the stereo that's in the comfortable range where you're getting a little bit of channel bleed between left and right which is a little bit more like speaker listening if you like that you could pay three grand or you could pay 200 bucks uh -huh. and there's virtually no difference between besides a little bit of the signature that's I, I will say that. So the three grand, yeah, there's some cool features. It's milled out of a single block of aluminium, that yada yada yada. Um and it has a powerful um actually mains powered amplifier that's in there. So the battery only lasts around seven hours. Okay. So but uh when it yeah, when it comes down to it, the diminishing returns, they they come in real quick. Real quick, so yeah, beyond two hundred bucks, I don't think there's anything you can really get better. They all do it right there, and I'm not sure if I'm answering the question right. I went on a long tangent, <laughs> kind of a long tangent. Did I answer it? No. So what's what's your favorite MD player? Oh, you that's a, was that the question? Player, player unit only. Yeah. Okay, two. Like your go-to. Go-to, man. Okay, another bag of hurt here. Now we. Oh. I didn't know we we're going to go this far on this channel. Okay, on the, on this video. Okay, so if you have an Alvi unit from Sharp, mm -hmm. you have to, uh, which has was the first mass produced portable uh, balanced output. So that would be like 
this one here, this this expensive unit here, has uh, has balanced here, which is, which is a Sony 4.4 millimeter with five poles on it. This sharp one that you just saw is uh, has four poles, and it's basically I can't remember the mapping. It's either left left plus, left minus, right plus, right minus, something like that. And a typical a typical connection. Yeah, yeah. A typical connection is ring, tip, it's sleeve, kind of right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> now that was a that was a mini disc case. All right. So the Sharp LV ones, the later units like the uh, MD. I'm, oh, I'm going to screw up the name. Why? I have a unit here. Let me see. At least I, I might have taken it downstairs. Um, got a lot of got a lot of units in my in my desk here. Oh man. I think I took it downstairs. I don't have it here. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name. It's it's the DS55, I believe. It's got an al um, aluminium top and a plastic bottom. Not the best made, but you can put the most sensitive earphones on the market. Three grand earphones, 10 grand earphones that are extremely sensitive that you can plug into the vacuum of space. And I know sound doesn't travel in space, but if you've plugged those earphones in, you'll hear a hiss. You can plug that into that thing and there's no hiss. And it will it will return 90 degrees 90 decibels of stereo separation 16 bit tops out at 96 so just about as high as it goes with 16 bit music the noise floor very I'm the noise not the hiss from the amp but the noise floor in the recording and uh, or the playback device is really low again I'm using a high end AD uh, AD converter amazing the thing is with all those sharps if you plug in a regular earphone that's tip ring sleeve, you will get no stereo at all. You will get left and right channels almost like mono, just really? a little bit better than mono. There's no stereo at all. So you have to go balanced or you'll hear there'll be no left and right separation. Everything will be congealed in the middle and it will sound very, not muddy, but it'll, it, it just wow. sounds slow and wrong. So in order to enjoy those sharp units, you need to get a pair of earphones that have a removable cable. And to get a cable like this that you can get on Amazon, this is a very cheap one for about 20 bucks, that then changes um, stereo to balanced. And then the sound is incredible. But the thing is, if you have a, pardon me, if you have a, a favorite earphone like a Grado GR10 or GR8, which is hardwired to a three pole, so TRS, which again, like this, and they're very great earphones. They're tiny, great sound. You can sleep with them because they're they just kind of fit right in the ear. Y you cannot use them on that player or any of the Sharp Alvi or One Bit players and get stereo sound. So it won't sound good. So I love the I love that Sharp. It is the best, objectively the best sounding unit, measurably, as well as personally, I really like its its signature. Objectively, the best sounding unit out of every portable mini disc. Mm -hmm. out there the wow. the ds55 but you have to have balanced you, earphones otherwise right. it sounds yeah. rubbish so that brings me to if you're not going to go the balanced route another very good one is the um the iowa oh, why always if i forget the hx1 yeah hx100 that's a player right just a player a player unit only so if we're talking about players yeah this one is good it has a decent the one one this one's broken by the way um, has a <laughs> decent control output here. If you remember that you have your volumes over here and the other controls are at the top, right. you can kind of figure it out. It's not the best. You have to look at it to use it. So it's not perfectly laid out, but has it's one touch, very light, good battery life, very good sound, good stereo separation, but it has hiss. So mm -hmm. it only works really well with headphones like this that do not, they're not so sensitive. Right, right. Um, but if I were to go, that question is so hard to answer because what's my favorite? Well, <laughs> if I had if I had these headphones, why are they are the, the sharp? But uh -huh. but then that sharp is not high MD. So if you're walking with baggy pajama trousers to take <laughs> out the trash, it's gonna skip, even though it's 40 seconds. It yeah. will do it. If you wear regular jeans instead of your pajamas outside, Fine. which you shouldn't do anyway, then it won't skip. Um, but then the high MD units, they do sound they have better amps. Listen, they don't test necessarily better, but they have lower noise floor for headphones. They, if you're worried about hiss, the high MD is the way to go, but it won't touch the sharp for 
low amounts of hits. The sharp mm -hmm. is just king for that. Um, but the high MDs, you'll get way better skip protection for SB recordings. Um, but you'll get horrible interfaces, just rubbish interfaces. Yeah. Just, just this, like you look at them and it's like, why are there f seven buttons all thrust together? And why are they the same size? Why do none of them have any sort of I indication? That. that little one, like, yeah, one has a nib. One has a nib for sure. Yeah. On, on this, um, on this oh, one, this one, one, nice port thing. It, it had the yeah. same little button. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, right. But it, oh, it should be larger on that one, I think. Like that little, yeah. It's a bit, a little bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but it had that little thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I guess they wanted you, you know, while you're you're jogging or running or whatever, you can hold it like this and then just flip it with your with your finger. Yeah. Um, this is I've always liked this. This it's a, bit, it's a bit bulky, yeah. Uh, but it's also Type R, so yeah. get, and it's it's uh, Net MD also. Hmm. It's a it's a good one. Um, you know the uh, the MZR three seven that unit didn't, they didn't sell that in Japan, and that is one of the sexiest units ever. the uh, The MZRH one, of course, which was the first, not the first, the 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 last. This one didn't come out in Japan. Nope, nope. You can import it here, and I've seen it. Somebody tried to sell it for around fifteen hundred bucks, but yeah, no. So I, uh, I bought the this thing. I bought brand new. Beautiful, but um, but but it didn't come with the the uh, the, the the connector. So I had to buy the oh, connector. Yeah, yeah. I had to buy the connector se separately. Yeah. And these connectors are not are not cheap. Let me tell no, you. No, no, they're not cheap. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And that's I think that's the only they didn't use that uh, remote on any other unit as well. So that one's actually quite. A weird one with like a little button like yeah. a, it's a strange one um, when it came out it was uh it was one of the worst ones but it's so rare yeah. it's but so yeah. rare that it's expensive now yeah for sure um the ends up by that that was my first the first unit i had that w that didn't break oh, okay um, i i had an mt10 or mt20 from sharp and then that broke three days later uh -huh. um, and i so i bought uh, an mz r37 and i got it was purple oh rare yeah. and beautiful oh, yeah. I, and I, I kept that thing in a, a neoprene case and made sure there's no scratches. And stupidly, I sold it, which wow. I didn't do that. Um, no, that unit is. It, it's got it's got that sort of '70s thinking about the '90s sort of aesthetic to it. Yeah, it's, you're right. It does. It, it's yeah. it's like yeah, yeah, like someone in the '70s trying to imagine what right. the future technology right. would look would look exactly. like. And the yeah. RH one, which was the last unit they ever portable unit they ever sold draws upon some of the design language from the r r r37 mm -hmm. it's just it's beautiful and the sound quality of that one is very good it sounds very good, good. yeah mm -hmm. low low noise quality very good it measures well um it's much more robust than the r55 which this is which, one, which, this is which one of my favorite out. recorders is that the so, 710 it's this no? 700 700 i got it wrong 700 with uh, and uh, this this one i bought this this is like brand new also <laughs> I bought this relatively cheaply because they said it didn't work. Hmm. But all it was was that the battery thing was all corroded. So when I oh, bought it, yeah. when I when I bought it, and it looks, it literally looks like it just came out of the box. It looks right. it, brand new. Yeah. Uh, when I bought it, I, I popped the the battery lid, and the, the battery was like solid, corroded oh, in, right, inside. Right, right, right. So I pulled it out, got some vinegar, cleaned it yeah. all up, and it works. It, and it works. Perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bought a um, that that you that sharp that I was just talking about. I bought a, a non-working one the other day, um, or it's only supposed to work if you plug it into the AC. And uh, I it it was corroded too far that I couldn't just put some some vinegar on it. I had to soak it overnight. But then it now it works really well, and uh, absolutely I recommend that the the DS fifty five. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you don't go balanced, there's no point to using the sharps. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I bought another one of those 700s also. Uh, this one came with a bunch of mini discs too. It's like 30 discs and this thing. Wow. Um, and uh, it plays perfectly, but it it, yeah. it, won't, it won't record. Oh, okay. What's wrong with it? You can't can't record with it. You hit, hit the record and nothing happens, but you can play stuff on it, hmm. which is unfortunate. I don't think he's listening today. We got a guy named Martin, and uh, he he fixes those stuff. He's a hmm. he's a physics guy. And a physics or is it? Weather, it's one of those two. But he, uh, in his in his in his free time, he takes them all apart. He replaces the tiny little springs that you can't even see with your naked eye, and and the, the worm gears and all that. He fixes all that stuff. So he would know how to 
Well, that, England, that, that brings something Germany. up, right? Because you know, uh, we we both love this format, and we yeah. we both use it almost daily. Yeah. Um, these machines are not getting any younger. No. No. Um, there's going to become a time where you know uh, it, it's going to be very difficult to get yeah. the equipment to play back the discs. Yeah. Um, and I mean, hopefully that's far, far away, but but still, you, it, it's it's coming. Well, that's uh, you know, just from a very a, a slightly higher level, uh, higher level uh, commentary on that. The the MZE three three. The reason one of the reasons why that one's great is you don't it doesn't rely on the gumstick batteries. You can use just the regular AA, yeah. um, which is real cool. And uh, quite funnily, funnily, yeah, sure. Quite oh. funnily, a lot of the units that use those AA batteries were not sold in Japan. So you have uh, Sharp have a whole bunch of units that they only sold uh, in England. I'm not even sure if they sold them on the continent, oh. as well as in um, in America, and Canada, probably yeah. Australia. That uh, that come with a double eight, and you you will not see them here. One is the MT99, very ugly unit, ex extremely ugly unit, but it uses an AA, uh, gets great battery life. It does MDLP if, if you want that. Mm -hmm. um, then there's there's the uh, SR SR50. That one was sold in Japan. SR50, 60, 70 was sold here. But those were the only ones I know of from the around 1990, after 1999, sorry, era that had a AA battery in the body that were sold in Japan. Every other one, it's the gum Sony and everything, it was was sold abroad. And I I sometimes import them because there's one I don't have it. It's downstairs, and I the name I always forget. Um, it's a it's an ugly unit, but mm -hmm. it is it's a sharp unit. It's one of the only ones that has boostable treble and bass plus a bass boost amplification in the unit itself. You know what? I got it. Okay, come on, come on. All right, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to MD. Uh, she's like I'm gonna go to MD. Uh, what is it called? MD Mini Disc Mini the Community right. Place. The yeah yeah. Let's go to let's go to the. Oh, you know what? Hey, wait. Can't I, I can I can I think I can send the screen. I can Let me share. I can yeah. do that. Let me see here. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Screen. Uh, Chrome tab. That's share audio. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, no. I got. Oh, you know, what? I got to make a new. Just let me make a new Chrome tab. But oh, I need it. I'm just. I need this. No, that mini just the org. Okay. Now I'm gonna share the screen here. Let's see here. Share. I'm a pro. <laughs> Maybe just need a portable. All um, right. Sure, can you see? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go down to equipment equipment browser. Uh huh. Oh, hey, what? Why is it? There you go. Right. And it's a play. Uh, no, it's a recorder unit, and it's from Sharp. I think they have it here. Dear, no, it's not. It might be this. No, that's not it, Nathan. This is it. Yes. That's here. MT two ninety. Yeah. So that big fat thing here, that's like the, the big I'm, forehead, like the big pro, pro, pro magnum forehead there. Four, by the way, interestingly enough, that I say that they only sold that in in places dominated formerly by Cro Magnums. <laughs> by the way, so that there's where you put the AA battery. <clears throat> uh -huh. And it's got a tiny little screen, just like the MZR37. But and the, the interface here. Also interesting, Sharp had a lot of bad interfaces where they designed it to look cool, but it didn't work. But you have your volume here. You have your tracking here. Mm -hmm. And then you have some other controls here. But they're far enough away that you're not going to mess up your volume from your other things. But they're also not in a place that you're not going to remember them, like the Sony. And uh, anyway, this one is a great unit. Really great unit. Sorry, I'm coughing a bit. Uh, it doesn't look great, though. I, I no, would, no, I no. It, it's, never, it's not a pretty unit. But check out that amp. 10 milliwatts by 10 milliwatts. Most of them are uh, the newer Panasonic's are three milliwatts, yeah. two point eight milliwatts. Some of the oh, another thing with the 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 Sharp Alvi units, a big problem is yes, you have to use them in in um, balanced, and they sound great in balanced. But balanced basically uses two amplifiers, so they advertise as up to eight milliwatts per channel. Mm -hmm. But that's divided between two amps, so you only get four. You're only really getting four milliwatts. They don't get loud, but these units get louder and they're more powerful. Yeah. How many how many um uh players or recorders do you have? Oh man, don't <clears throat> my wife's not <laughs> she's way downstairs. Um 
Not not that I would, you know, not want to. <laughs> this is information that this is this is good information. Are, are you an addict? To doesn't doesn't. You know I don't think I have a hundred. I can't believe I just said a hundred. I don't have a hundred, but I mean, like it's uh, more than forty, more than fifty, probably. Yeah. Now, let's see how we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven. 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 And then and then one on a deck. I think you know what. I actually do want to pare down most of them. I just like like this one. I just like yeah. I've got the MZ one. Yeah, I got it. But I I don't really use it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's uh, eight because I, I have this one too. This this uh this little uh, net MD thing. It's it's kind of silly. But you, as we're chatting, one has just sprouted out from the woodworks. He's gonna have nine pretty soon. This one yeah. you can. Rec it's, it doesn't even have a mic input. It's just. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those ones, yeah. Uh, the USB. Um, but it's oh, no, that's an AA unit, isn't it? Hmm? Is that an AA battery unit? It is. It is, yep. yeah. Yeah, in the back there, you just put the... Only sold for cro chromagnums, yeah. Yeah, in the back there. Yeah, I, I don't really use this that much, but it is kind of right. handy with the WebMD thing. You can just right, right, right. the USB, put a disk in, boom. Boom. Um, yeah. Does it when you do that? Does it self power, or do you have to use a, an AC adapter with that as well to do the WebMD? No, no, no. You just put the battery in. Battery's fine. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot batteries. That's yeah, right. plug the battery in. It's good to go. The yeah, the I was talking about the A battery, and I, and yeah. I forgot about that. And then we talking about the the USB. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I say, okay, it's all connected. It's yeah. all connected. I got that. It's all good. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, say probably that's all good. It's probably a good way for a good place for me to. And I'm supposed to take out my daughter for a walk. Cool. If anyone's got a couple more questions, and Gareth, mm -hmm. if you can, uh, just what what's the by the way? It's pretty easy to see. What's the name of your your links and all that? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you uh, uh, if you want to listen to my podcast, go to mindsetcentral.com. Yeah. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Mindset Central. Yep. Uh, check it out. It's well recommended, by the way. I've only heard around five episodes. I need to hear more. Um, I was getting through my cues over at Odyssey, and I, I love, I'm not, not sure you ever heard of this guy named Keith Woods. Whenever he has a new one, uh -huh. I end up listening to his, and then I listen to this guy named Morgoth, and then I get on tangent. But when I come back to something, your long form conversations are great with your guests. Um, Thanks, yeah. Thank anyway. Yeah, they're very good. There, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand in it, as I probably <laughs> uh, is probably really obvious from this conversation. Oh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. all over the place, dude. Yeah. We, there's no holds barred. We we touch on everything. Yeah, and uh, what what I say, I mean, we we go all kinds of conspiracies and everything, yeah. and I, I I most conspiracies are nonsense. Yeah, you but, mentioned that today or in your latest podcast. But, yeah, but not all. Yeah, yeah, and and we we we're sometimes a lot of people are in, in, in the danger of throwing out the baby with the bathwater, right? And uh, yeah. a lot of them is it's all bullshit, right? But, but some of them are far from that. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, so check it out, mindsetcentral.com. Well recommended. There you go. As well as uh, DS55 from Sharp and the MZE33. I mean, they're recommended for different reasons. Obviously, you listen to podcasts. In monorail on those players exactly mono yeah. and if anyone's got anything to say That's bring it out here bring out your dead and i've got the just a lot la a last sip That's here good. uh they're talking about uh let's see hd sound nicam stereo dat and dcc <laughs> dcc uh, yeah. DCC, digital compact cassette oh. um all the old formats the old uh I think didn't didn't DCC come out around this around the time of me? Yep. Around yeah, basically, time? it was uh, what Phillips wanted to pit directly, yeah. directly between DAT and MD, which I think is rather insane. But um, yeah, it had it had I think a higher compression rate even than mini disc um, for the amount of data that was on uh, one uh -huh. one uh, regular cassette. And I I had a friend that had one, and he was he was from the Netherlands, and uh, <laughs> we, we were roommates and. It was cool. It was a cool unit, very well made, but uh, I didn't see the point of it. Yeah, I mean, it was. Listen, it was cool. You DCC people, I got nothing against you, but it was like there's a with an optical disc, you can go. I want to hear the next track, and maybe 
Maybe that's a little bit too much technology. Maybe we should be listening from beginning to end. But with the cassette, the di digital compact cassette is like, okay, fast forward. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's just still winding on, whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. Day, you hit the next track yeah. and yeah. boom, it's playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we should we should tell everyone that yeah. um, March 7th is International Mini Disc Day. I didn't even know that. I didn't uh, even. And uh, on that date, 28 labels are, re are, are releasing 54 uh, albums pre-recorded on many disc. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, if you want to check that out, go to uh, minidiscday.com. So uh, March 7th is uh, International Mini Disc Day. All right, uh, watch this. I think I can do that. I can. I can even like watch this. Stop screen. Um, uh -huh. I might do it. I might accidentally kill kill the kill the stream here. A second here. Um, it's hard to be such a pro. Let's see, share. Look at that. Oh. Mini disc day. Uh, is this the one you're talking about? Oh, it says March seven. Yeah, this is it. That's uh, actually you know that's twenty twenty. That's the last one. But yeah, I think there's one coming up in the next few weeks for the for the for this year for twenty twenty one. All right, uh, and the independent artists, um, indie indie artists, will be yep. releasing albums on <laughs> on mini disc, like um, you know, with like a, a label and like a, a packaging and all that yep. stuff. Um, so I, I guess it's not dead yet. <laughs> oh. Yeah, looking forward to that. On on that note, we got a final Clive Rutherford. Oh, by the way, here uh, Ishmael Hardin, you go balance everything. Yeah, balanced. Um, it solves a lot of problems. If you're going to get perfect sound not using balanced, you have to have much better DACs and amps, and things get expensive real quick. Balance solves a lot of things in a very, um, in a, in easier, and what's, I always forget this word, in a more streamlined way. It, it does require more power, though. But um, yeah, balance is good. And finally, Clive Rutherford, we have, re have we reached the limit with sound technology? There's never, I think there's never any limit with, with technology, um, with sound, in terms of how my personal opinion, as well as kind of informed understanding of it, is that uh, your ears, your body, your soma reacts to sound in a different way, but you have hard limits essentially to what you can hear. Right. But that that's not the end of, that's not the end of the conversation where it, car, where it, where it regards sound quality. There's a whole bunch of things. However, I don't think you're ever going to get better sound for the human being than you'll get with like i would argue for 20 uh 16 bit dithered some people would argue for 24 bit the difference between them is noise at high levels but i mean the difference between 24 bit and 16 bit is volume that's it um and noise so if you if you want to hear your music um at 24 bit levels you have to listen at higher than 100 decibels and that's going to kill yours so I would say 16 bit and uh don't 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 worry about it but from the recording standpoint right now they've just got out um what is it the new thing is 32 bit float which is not that new but it's um it's new in the portable segment and what it allows you to do is record at any volume basically and then you can restore the volume later on post facto meaning that you don't have to gain it up and then try to remove noise you can gain it up without any increase in noise and that's really great that will always increase and the higher on any recording the higher d bit depth that you can do is always better but on the playback i i'm i'm not sure it's going to matter so much but it all it doesn't matter whether whatever the hard stop around the human soma is it doesn't matter the technology will always go on so yeah mm -hmm. awesome stuff man all, all i would say i know we're going to be wrapping yeah. up soon yeah uh, I, I would strongly recommend people embrace their physical media. Embrace it. Enough with like, all this streaming nonsense. Get the yes. physical deal. Yes. And Mo Mono. And uh, Stefano. Mono. If you're listening to this, man. Mono. Mono. Hook mono. it up. In the WebMD, man. We need some Mono. Get it going. Yeah. If, if it's even possible. I don't know. We'll see. Even if it's not, you've done a great job, Stefano. So oh, we love you. Amazing. So yeah, Great stuff. If you're listening. Yeah. Well, Garrett, we've done uh, it's the longest stream I ever done. Yeah, it's That's... been a pleasure, man. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. It's, great, it's great to finally talk to you in person, yes, dude. Absolutely, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Awesome, awesome, yeah. very cool.
And if you'd ever want to come back, okay, we'll yeah, we'll try to barter some. Uh, I would be very happy to have yeah, you. I, w- I would well be up to doing it again. Great stuff for sure. Yeah. And everyone, thanks for chatting in the in the in the chat. <laughs> I always forget my words. And to the Canadian that was there for five minutes, it's my friend. I was glad to have you for five minutes. There's no way he stuck around this the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much, Garrett. I'm just thank gonna play you. this outro video like it like it's like I'm a pro. Awesome. And I'm not. Add to stream. And uh yeah. Guys, have a good one. Okay, good night, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you. Is it playing? No, Neither. No. Ain't doing it right. Engage. I'll just fast forward. Do you hear it? Here it comes. That's All right, good. it's there. All right, guys, you just enjoy this this outro, and then uh... Garrett, I'll see you later. It's like the seventh right, time. All right, bye bye. Later. Bye.